so much. And our Thursday night college football tour begins in Memphis, Tennessee. And an American Conference opener between Navy and Memphis. Plenty of swagger early on in the season for the Memphis Tigers. They are 2-0. Navy's lost four in a row against Memphis. Can they stop that streak tonight to do it? They'll have to go against Seth Hennigan and one of the more talented quarterbacks in the American. I tell you what, always pageantry when these two get together as we welcome you in to the Nissan pregame drive as we begin Thursday night college football right here on ESPN. And with that, welcome into another season. I am Matt Ferry. So happy to be joined by the coach, Dan Mullen, this year. But it's going to be fun talking about the great time. next few months. We great cannot time. wait to break it down. Being an offensive mind as you are, you get a good look at one of the best in this conference tonight, Seth Hennigan. They are an entertaining unit to watch. Yeah, and he's coming in as his third year as the starter. You see the confidence he's playing with, the confidence he's leading this team with out there on the field. And he's got some great Great weapons all around him. He's joined by two great players in the backfield with Blake Watson and Sutton Smith are these two backs and they're going to be moving all over the field. They'll be moving around and they feel good about the depth that they had this year. They were talking about how explosive they've been just over 45 points a game. So Memphis comes into this one with a lot of momentum and a lot of encouraging results early on in the season. On the other side, you've got Navy. You've got their new head coach, Brian Newberry, defensive coordinator under Ken Niamatololo. They make a change at coach the first time in 16 years and coach they're doing some things differently and they are they're still going to be the navy team we expect to see they're going to come in try to control the clock run the ball and they're still going to be an option based team however unlike navy in the past they're going to spread it out some last week we saw them take the ball right down the field in a two-minute drive we expect to see both quarterbacks tonight we expect to be entertained thursday night football is back on espn kickoff from simmons bank liberty stadium is next and now we take a look inside nissan's heisman house I used to watch the Heisman House every year on TV, and I'd always wonder, is it real? I can tell you now, it's very real. Take a little bit more up the top. Now that I've been here a while, a little bit more. It's a lot like campus. We have roommates. Hey, Caleb. Just try and keep it down. It's nap time. Liz a share kitchen. Guess who's making cupcakes? I just want to make a sandwich. Of course, there's a gym. Ten. All right, people, here we go. Looking good, RG3. No, you're looking good, RG3. Yeah, so it's a lot you need like... Room, rookie? We're doing a tiki top. Yeah, that's right. OK, I think I got it now. Bam, bam. Bam, Just bam, like bam. campus. Wait, wait. I got it now. Got you it. Oh, man, the way Bryce is able to cover the whole field is incredible. Yeah, he's really spreading it around. You guys could help, you know. Just doing our jobs, Bryce. Just doing our jobs. Yeah, we're working, too. Thanks for watching the Nissan Free Game Drive. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. You're watching the American Conference on ESPN back in Memphis for our kickoff tonight. Let's go down to Harry Lyles Jr. Coach Ty Lavatai starting for you, but how much should we see of Blake Horvath tonight? Yeah, to be determined. Blake's gonna start, uh, Ty's going to start us off. He'll go the first couple of series, and we'll get Blake in there, and we'll kind of go from there. Going up against this high-powered Memphis offense, what is sort of the emphasis for your defense going into tonight? What do you want to see out of your guys? Well, we got to limit the big plays. You know, we, we got to be disruptive in the early downs. Got to get behind the sticks, give them third and longer situations. But we got to keep the ball in front of us, limit the next plays. Good luck, coach. Thank you. Harry, great stuff. Welcome back to the Thursday night crew. Looking forward to you the next few months as we get set to kick off. And a very Navy thing to do, Coach. They won the toss. They've elected to receive. You know Navy football's here if they take it 13, 14 plays down the field. Well, and that's what they want to do is set the tempo of the game this way. If they can take a drive, throws Memphis out of that rhythm with this long drive. They're, the high-powered offense is sitting on the sidelines, waiting, waiting, waiting. And that's what Navy wants to do to control this tempo. Ty Lavatai, he'll get the start for the mids. Tristan Vandenberg set to kick it off. Tyler Bradley deep to receive for Navy. We are underway. Bradley from the five. 
Gets a crease past the 25, knocked out of bounds at about the 27-yard line, and that's where we'll see this new-look Navy offense laid by their senior quarterback, Ty Labatai, has the experience that Navy's looking and for. And that, that's the one thing I think they have him in here because of his veteran nature. We're going to see them play multiple quarterbacks tonight, but he's the veteran leader. Coming back off the knee injury, he was injured in the offseason, had to go win his starting job back after spring ball and training camp, and he did that, and he's a, such a great leader for them on the field. You might not recognize this stat, but last <laughs> week against Wagner, 13 pass attempts and who, for Navy. Started in the shotgun back under center. And look at this, right out of the gate, Lava tied a throw on first down. Jade Numbarger on the reception, and a gain of four. And I think that's the new thing that they want to do. They want to show that we're still going to be an option team. We're going to show you different looks, different formations, but they want to throw the ball. And you start off with a nice, easy throw to get yourself into the flow of the game. Throughout the evening, we'll talk about this Navy offense and, and kind of the beginning of it, how it's a layer of every offense in the country. Coach Mullen will break that down for you. But first thing, second and six. The handoff up the middle to Daba Fofana. And, and he's their guy. They, they still want to establish the fullback in this offense. If you can establish the fullback, and this is where Navy still wants to be. It's going to look a little bit different, but they got you in their third and two situations. And that's the Navy that you know they want to be in that situation all night long. So third and short, this Memphis defense to start the season, second in total defense through the first two games. So they've, they've played some good ball trying to get an early three and out. Now an empty backfield. Man in motion for Lavatai. He hands it off to the motion man, Amin Hassan, and that's going to be a first down for Navy. And a great job. They disguised the formation right there to be able to create an edge. And in talking to Matt Barnes, the defensive coordinator at Memphis, one of the things he talked about is we have got to set edges. The fullback's going to get his some yards inside, but we have got to set edges to prevent the big plays in the perimeter. So that's a good conversion early on for Navy. Ball just over the 41-yard line. And that's right up the middle. Alex Tesca on the carry, gain of five. And that's the old triple option we're used to seeing out of Navy right there. And as the quarterbacks get into the flow, the one thing of running this, you saw Ty Labatai right there with the read again, establishing the fullback. That was close to a pull read, though, and he's going to get one of these pulls. They want to get that ball out there in the perimeter. That's where the explosive plays happen. You know, you talk to both of these coaches, namely the Memphis coaching staff, of getting Navy on a short week, and their eyes just <laughs> white, and they say it's a nightmare to prepare for. And you're seeing early on four or five yards a chunk, and that'll be another first down for Navy. That's Tesco again. And when you talk Grant Chestnut, it was an offensive line coach, the offensive coordinator for Navy. And he said one of the things that's different, you're not going to just see them line up in the traditional option formation. There's going to be motions, shifts, and different formations that you haven't seen. You see them here coming out in the unbalanced formation and shift into empty. Here goes. Watch the tight ends and eligible receiver. They're going to try to sneak them down the middle. Lava tight looked covered. first, kept the ball down, and ran and a gain of four. And already, Coach, you're seeing new wrinkles we perhaps haven't seen from Navy. Yeah, and you're seeing it right here. They shift out into an empty formation right now, trying to disguise to hide their tight end. And we're not used to seeing tight ends in Navy's offense. Memphis does a good job in the secondary of covering that, picking it up. But again, you see Ty Labatai, good decision making. Go get a couple of yards and keep them on, on track. If you want to see these new clock rules in college football with a team like Navy? <laughs> well, this is the drive they want. Here they are back in the double wing. This is what we're normally used to seeing out of Navy right now. And that's an old school play, the fullback. It was the, uh, it's the that's a quarterback duck zone read. Ty Lobbitt's going to read the defensive tackle on that. He pulled the ball and just lost his footing. And this is where Memphis needs to step up defensively. They get, they get Navy into a third long. But Navy's mindset here, remember, is you, you probably have two downs to get this. And they've, they've already made that decision, whether they're going to punt on fourth or they're going to try to go for it on fourth. And that'll affect the third down call. So an impressive drive for Navy. Now third and seven. Lavatai out of the shotgun. To throw. Quick shot. 
Misses his receiver intended for Eli Heidenreich. And that'll bring up fourth down. And it is different. That's, I think, the new look you're seeing out of Navy. A team that in third down in the medium to long situations are more comfortable getting into the shotgun, getting into a pass formation, and willing to throw the football. But I, if you're Navy, this was a very successful first drive. You took time off the clock, and you're flipping, have the potential here to flip field possession and pin, pin Memphis deep. It'll be Riley Reithman to punt. Ray Guy Award watch lists. Kobe Drake situated his 10. That's where he'll fair catch it. And that's where we'll see Memphis's offense after a punt of 37. And Seth Hennigan, now the junior quarterback. He started since he was a freshman. 26 career starts. Each and every year you've seen this kid grow into a better quarterback. Denton Ryan, his high school, he's the son of a coach, started all 13 games last season. He can sling it through the air, but Coach Bowen, the one thing they said about Seth Hennigan is his confidence walking around the facility, now knowing this is his team. Yeah, when you start as a freshman sometimes, you talk about it. There are a lot of older guys that you're trying to just lead by example. He's become a verbal leader for this team this, this offseason. First two games completed 70% of his passes. He's going to throw on first down, dumps it down to Blake Watson. This kid can move. Watson, you see it there. And how about that for a gain on first down from Memphis? 21 yards to the talented running back, Xavier McDonald and Elias Harry team up to tackle. And they're going right back on the ball, trying to create the tempo. You see Navy's not quite set. Hennigan forced out of the pocket, wisely throws it away, pressured by Will Harbour. As we take a look at our player to watch, brought to you by Dave and Busters, and right out of the gate, you saw him, Blake Watson. There are two running backs on this team between Sutton Smith and Blake Watson. We saw Watson on first down and his big playability. And that's what they want to do. They just get their athletes the ball in space, and that's where Seth Hennigan has really done a great job. He's not afraid to take the check downs and just get the ball to his playmaker. Ryan Silverfield, the head coach, talked about Watson two-time thousand-yard rusher at ODU transfers in and immediately making an impact for Memphis and again again to throw over the middle good shot caught Rock Taylor the goal is to get him the ball early they do and another first down for Memphis and as a coach you do you have a player like Rock Taylor when you have a player like Rock Taylor you want to get him the ball they have him singled up on the backside just a slant round they rolled the coverage to the field he does a nice job getting around the defensive end that's dropping to the flat comes around him Good patience by Seth Hennigan, and you've got your star receiver into the flow early. So two first downs already from Memphis. I enjoyed our conversation with offensive coordinator Tim Krams. He said, yeah, you know what? We like to get rocked the ball early, so he's happy. <laughs> so you got a happy receiver. Hey, you got to keep those guys happy, Matt, right there. What you don't want is them coming over the sidelines saying, when am I getting the ball all day long? Oh, I know. I work with the receiver every Saturday, Joey Galloway. <laughs> We still got to keep him happy, even when he's doing TV. Nice game there on first down. It was Watson again, gain of five. There's one thing you can say for the Memphis Tigers. They have athletes all over the field. Hennigan, time. Hennigan, misfires intended for Taylor. That'll bring up third down. Yeah, Taylor just slipped right there coming out of the route. But you just see out what you're seeing out of uh, out of Seth Hennigan as a veteran guy, just how relaxed and confident he is in the pocket, making the plays, getting through his reads, getting through his progressions. Navy's coming out with a lot of different blitz looks they've shown here early in this game. And they're coming out. This is a big deal for Navy. They're going to play zero coverage. They're going to walk everybody over the line of scrimmage and try to bring more than they can block. So third and five, they back it off. Hennigan finds the soft spot in that defense. Joseph Skates makes the catch. Colin Ramos on the tackle, nine yards. Memphis first down. And really good job there. Memphis with the motion. You see, they're showing a zero deep man look across the board. When the motion comes, nobody runs with them. So Hennigan knows, I have zone coverage. They're not going to blitz me. They're going to bail out. And he's just relaxed and calm. Good decision, good throw. Hennigan off to a good start in Navy territory. Give to Watson off the right side. There goes Watson again. He is getting yards and chunks. And that looks like it's going to be close to, if not another first down. They move the chains, courtesy of a good block by Jacob Likes, the starting center. 
and that's one of the things that, that you looked at Memphis. They wanted to establish the run, but they want to run consistently, not just the big plays, the efficient five and six and seven yard runs. And they've done a good job on that on this drive. Uh, the running back Sutton Smith checks in. He splits out to the top of your screen. Now empty backfield. Again, a zero deep look. They're showing the blitz. Hennigan, quick shot, tip, good defensive play by Jacob Busick. And that, and that's one of the things here. It's a great job if you look. They know if they walk up everybody onto the line of scrimmage, somebody should be coming free. They're going to rush more than Memphis has as blockers. Memphis went to a quick screen to try to beat the blitz, and a great job getting the hands up, seeing the ball's got to, you know the ball's got to come out quick when you're blitzing, and tipping the pass. Second and ten now for Hennigan. Forced out of the pocket. Throws back across. Kobe Drake. Kobe Drake is going to have a first down for Memphis and a gain of 14. Xavier McDonald or Will Harbour then. Yeah, really nice, nice job right here. They're getting into zone coverage and really nice job. Just sitting down in the zone, knowing where you are, not overrunning it, and making yourself available to the quarterback. We expected them to take some shots early, but the fact that they're just kind of giving them what the defense takes, they're just settling into those pockets. And, and that's what makes Seth Hennigan comfortable right now. You see that veteran shot. They're going to call shot plays, but he's only going to take it if it's there. Tenth play of the drive. Pitch to Sutton Smith. Corralled immediately by Will Harbour, gain of two. Will Harbour, the captain of that defense. I'm telling you what, you're talking about, if you're a captain of Navy, I mean, you're the you're the leader of leaders. You know, well, the one thing you look at this Navy team, they preach that they are such, they're not just an unbelievable one of the top academic schools, obviously, in the world, but they're the number one leadership school in the country. And it's an honor if you are the leader of leaders. Rayon Lane, we spoke with him, the free safety, talked about that leadership, talked about coming to Navy. You go out who you come in with. So much pride with Navy. We'll detail that story throughout. As Hennig get a designed run, and he's tripped up by the captain, Harbor. After a gain of one, Hennigan has that in his game, but he wasn't able to get away from it. Yeah, great, great tackle. You look at him as a pocket passer, and he's calm and throws the ball so well in the pocket. But he has great athleticism, and he can run. That was a heck of a tackle because he had a, he had a, a looking like he was going to walk into the end zone if he got past him. So third and eight, the eleventh play of this drive. Hennigan back to the middle of the field. It is caught in another first down. Anthony Lanfear, the tight end over the middle for 11. And that's a good conversion of third long to keep this drive alive. And Hennigan's been so accurate so far this year. And that's one of the things. He's completed over 70% of the passes in both games. And you just see him. He's just in a great rhythm right now. Five for eight, 66 yards. Watson back in. Watson trots into the end zone in our first touchdown of the night. The Memphis Tigers. And our player to watch, already the fourth touchdown for him on the season. That was an impressive drive to open the game for New Memphis. It really was very efficient. I thought they were able to run the ball, and you saw it, they finished it off. Now, you, what you want to do, you get down here, you get the ball to your playmakers. And Blake Watson breaking the tackle right there on the line of scrimmage on defensive uh, nose tackle Landon Robinson that was in there. Getting into the end zone, great drive, very efficient drive by Memphis going right down the field. Seth Morgan on for the extra points. And how about this for efficiency coach, 13 plays, 90 yards, five minutes and 23 seconds is Blake Watson and this talented backfield get the home team up first. Seven nothing Memphis over Navy in the first quarter. Thursday night football in a nutshell. Those guys are loving it here. Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. 7 0 Memphis. After their 90 yard touchdown drive, saw a little bit of everything. Blake Watson got in on the action. Rock Taylor, Seth Hennigan, a productive start. 
these Memphis fans excited about the early part of this season. 2-0, wins over Bethune Cookman, and last week, Arkansas State. As Tristan Vandenberg sent it deep. Tyler Bradley out of his own end zone. He'll take a knee. And we will take a break. It's Navy back on offense. Looking to get something going. Right now down 7-0. 515 left in the first. ESPN Thursday Night College Football is brought to you by Sherwin Williams. Ask Sherwin Williams to help bring your color to life. The historic Peabody Hotel and the world famous Peabody Ducks. They make their journey down the elevator into the fountain for the day, and then they go back up at night to their palatial estate at the top of the Peabody Hotel, which has been our home for the past few nights. Love the ducks. Love those ducks. I know she's probably been there and seen the ducks numerous times. <laughs> it really is a uh, remarkable thing that they've trained ducks to just walk off an elevator. Yeah, I got to lead him out one time. That's so I hear. <laughs> so I hear. Navy with the ball, first possession. They ran it six times, passed it twice. That is a vintage Navy football play. Alex Tesca. There goes Tesca. Navy touchdown. 75 yards. And just like that, an extra point away from a tie ball game. And the Navy coaching staff was so excited about Alex Tesca and his big playability, his athleticism, his speed. And you saw it there, him running away from that secondary of Memphis. It's the triple option. We talked about earlier, the pull by the quarterback. Great pitch phase by Tesca. Gets out there. And the one thing that Memphis defense said, they have got to set the edge. The fullback can beat us inside, but we cannot let the ball get on the perimeter. You saw it got there, and Tesca showed the speed to get in the end zone. What an answer for Navy. Memphis, that was their first allowed offensive touchdown of the season. And it went for one play, 75 yards. You said Navy likes time of possession. <laughs> Just give me a good Just old right there. Pass, triple option pitch. Let the guy run, and Tesca did all the work. Great play, great comeback by Navy right now, especially after giving up that long drive. They want to stay in the game. They're not a team that's great, going to be playing from behind. And that answer, and Alex Tesca showing the speed getting down the field. This is one of those things Matt Barnes, the defensive coordinator, was talking about. You can be as prepared as you think. Your eye discipline has to be perfect. You can't get lulled to sleep or you'll get popped like that. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, you know what, what he, he said, Navy, said Navy, Navy week sucks. Uh, and, uh, and you see it because there's so many different ways that they're coming at you, running the option. You have got to be disciplined. And you've got to be disciplined with your eyes to always be in position. And you saw they got out of position on that play against the option. Perhaps of any game of the year for any team that plays the mids, you have to be so disciplined. And on a short week, short week, you don't have all that time to prep. Talk to Barnes, short week, maybe. He's like, yeah, yeah it, I know. So they've got their work cut out for now. Tie ball game, first quarter, Sutton Smith. Just off his five, Sutton Smith, Smith just to pass the 20. And Navy's got a little bit of juice after that big hit down the field. So, Coach, break this one down for us offensively. What made this thing work? I think we saw earlier he when he could have pulled. You saw it's the veer option. They, they tackle the dive. He gets the pitch key. The unbalanced formation with both receivers out there blocking uh, changed the support system for the Memphis secondary. And they did not have a support player out there in the perimeter. Everyone was blocked. Quarterback read it perfectly. You pull off the read key. You pitch off the pitch key. You block the support players. And then it was great to see a guy like Tesca put the Jets on and run away from that secondary. Their fullback back, Dabble Fofana, told us when the blocks are made, our offense is a beautiful thing to watch. That an example of it there. Two back set from Memphis. Blake Watson, Sutton Smith. First down run for Smith. Gain of five. They average just over four yards a carry on the season. So we talk about the quarterback a lot and their ability to big plays with receivers. They love running the ball with these two backs. They do, and they, and they do a great job of 
making sure the offense fits the personnel. They have two great backs. You're going to see them on the field, whether they're running the two-back set with them both in the backfield, putting one of them out into the slot. They're going to make sure their players are on the field. Officially a gain of four, second and six. Hennigan time. Hennigan over the middle. Hennigan nearly intercepted after the tipped pass intended for Brendan Doyle. Down to Harry. Guys, after that first Navy possession, there were a lot of smiles down here, in particularly between Seth Hennigan and head coach Ryan Silver, Silverfield. Excuse me. They, one of the things that they wanted to do with Hennigan this upcoming season was put more on his plate. One of the things that Silverfield was telling him down here on the sideline, great communication. If they keep that up, we'll see if it continues. Yeah, Harry, they, were, they, they marvel at Hennigan's football smart. Son of a coach said he's got the freedom to check at the line, but he doesn't have the freedom to do everything he wants. <laughs> Here on third and six, pressure. Hennigan over the middle, dropped. Intended for Demir Blankopsy, the transfer from Toledo. And after a 75-yard touchdown, Navy's defense comes out three and out. And that's, that is a huge deal, right? And when you, one of the things that Navy wants to do is they get six in a game. They want to create at some point, they want to create uh, six and three and out, four do, uh, fourth down stop or turnovers. If they get six of those things happen in a game, uh, add up to six, they feel they're going to be successful and win the game. Another head coach, Newberry, former defensive coordinator here. Loves that possession after Memphis did what they wanted on that first drive. And a punt of 51 yards. We got a good one in Memphis here in the first quarter. Tied at seven apiece in Memphis. Welcome back as we take a look at Robert Green as we honor those who serve. Brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. He's the corner coach here at Navy, 1998 graduate of the Naval Academy, served 20 years in Marine Corps, and 11th season with the Navy football program. Our thanks to Coach Green and everyone who has served. I could go into great detail about how much respect I have for these kids playing Navy football. We'll talk about their story throughout the night. It is just remarkable what these kids do on and off the field. And a remarkable run there by Daba Fofana, and how about Navy? Gain of 19, forced out by Diago Brumfield, and that's a play of 75 and a play of 19 two consecutive times. Yeah, and you're used to seeing the fullback just getting the short runs right here, but a great job. Fofana, strong, powerful runner, high school wrestler, breaks the tackle, gets his pads under the linebacker, able to get on the edge, and another explosive run for this Navy offense. But I say he's one of the most impressive young men we've ever talked with. We'll get into Fofana's story. You won't believe what he has to say. Ty Lavatai, how about this? Had the guy beat. That was intended for Xavier Arline. What's gonna say about Fofana, that tough, hard-nosed run? My man plays the cello. Yeah. <laughs> he plays the cello, and he just ran over them like nothing. And here's a look out of the Navy offense. They had one-on-one -on -one coverage with our line, couldn't complete the throw. Just overthrow him, but I'm telling you, this Navy offense, and the thing that looks different with them is the confidence in which they throw the football down the field. It's just a slight overthrow, but they throw the ball much more confidently than they used to. So incomplete, second and 10. Oh. Given to the up back for Fada, gain of three. And you see that, all the different options. They got into an unbalanced line right there. What that means is the tight end was on the short side. They brought an extra lineman to the other side. They run the quarterback duck. The quarterback, it's just a two-man option. He's reading the D tackle. And you saw Labatai right there had a lane finishing out the run. They're going to get to the point. They overcommit to the fullback. He'll pull that ball and get a big run. So third and seven, ball at the 45. Under three minutes here in the first quarter. Matt Berry, Dan Mullen, Harry Lyles with you. Thursday night kickoff. Empty backfield now for Navy. Motion man in. Lava time. Handoff up the counter. And that's Fofana. Check that Tesca. And a first down Navy. And a great job of deception right there. They, they, they shift motion high. And they run the slot back trap coming back inside. You see right here, there's the trap coming. So there's their motion of the cross, trying to, a lot of eye candy going on. You see Lava type rolling out to the left inside trap handle. And they said ex those exact words. In the evolution of this offense, we want to give so much eye candy to make the eye discipline go all over the field. And when they needed seven, they got nine on third down. And again, 
Pesca. Navy's offense is sailing right now. And you see that this is one thing that you're seeing athletes right here. These these Tesca is a guy that's an explosive guy. Come back on the dive, hand it off, and they are playing physical football. The the one thing Coach Newberry talked to us about, he said we seem to have lost over the last couple of years some of our offensive toughness. Look at Tesca's numbers: five rushes, 124 yards, and a touch. That was a gain of 30. And already Navy back deep in Memphis territory. Ball at the 17. Lava time. Touchdown, Navy. Lava tied a Regis Velez 16-yard touchdown. And what do we have here? What a play action pass. You see all the different motions, the movements coming, and just the simple naked uh, bootleg pass. And Labatai off the fake, full back in the flat. He rolls out, rolls out. Here comes the tight end on the naked from the backside. Anchors away, my friend. Anchors away. Yeah, they, they are sailing right now. <laughs> What an impressive drive. Six plays, 77 yards, two minutes and 50 seconds. And it was almost like a switch had flipped. The big plays now for Navy, these past two possessions, 75 yards, then 19, then 30, and then a Navy touchdown pass. And this is against one of the best defenses through the first two weeks in the country. This Memphis defense has not given up a touchdown this season coming into this game and two here in the first quarter by that Navy offense that has struggled in their first two games. That was Velez's first career reception, and it went for a touchdown. And this was Ryan Silverfield's worst nightmare. It is. It, uh, it, right there. And you look at it right now. The first drive from Navy, I think that first drive, even though they didn't come away with points, built some confidence up in that team. And I'll tell you what, the new look Navy offense, they threw to a tight end. Tight ends in the Navy offense right What now. in the world is going on in Navy football? Entertainment, Harry, that's what. A lot of the players that I spoke to this week said that this coaching staff has brought more out of them than they thought was ever possible. And we're going to see up coming up here on defense, they go by eat, effort, attitude, and toughness. Let's see if that toughness continues to translate, not just from offense, but on the defensive side of the ball here, too. Say there's a lot of eating going on right now. Minute 14 left in the first quarter. Hennigan to the offense, back out. Now down 14-7, and that happened quick. It did, but you're going to see, and this is where Hennigan now, being a junior, being a third-year starter, he's going to be able to step into this huddle as the leader. This is the leadership they wanted to see. When he was a freshman, they said he led by example. There's older kids. It's hard sometimes to be vocal when you're looking at guys that have been in the program for four years. He now is, this is his team. So he's going to rally the team, say, nothing to worry about. Let's get, get settled down. Let's just go be efficient, put a great drive together, and go put points on the board. 21 points on the board total here in the first quarter. Can Memphis add to it? The minute 14 ball at the 25. Handoff to Jay Ducker, his first carry of the night. They gain a two. And you've seen Memphis right now rotating a lot of players in here still early in the season. They're going to roll a lot of guys through. They have a lot of skilled guys. You get down on that field, they are a good-looking football team with skilled athletes out there in the field. And they're going to roll a lot of players and play, play them all. Five players already with a reception. After a gain of two. Hennigan fakes the handoff. Quick shot outside. Nice play, Memphis, Anthony Landfear. He's had a couple of nice catches and big gains. Gain of 11, big first down from Memphis, tackled and pressured by Busey. And a great job right here by Hennigan being patient. They just run a little naked, tight end. You see him coming back across the formation. You see the blitz coming off the edge. Hennigan does it instead of naked rolling out into it. Gives some ground, gets some depth, lets his tight end get in the flat, and makes the easy throw. Credit Navy, though. They're, they're playing well up front. I mean, Navy's they, coming after him. They are, and they're coming after him. You see right now, uh, like the uncovered receiver. So this will be the last play of the quarter. Quick out. That was Ducker again. And that's how we wrap it up here in the first quarter. 
And I tell you what, this thing, first couple of possessions of the game, Navy punted, Memphis went 90 yards right down the field to take a 7 nothing lead. And then the switch flipped for the mids. They've gone down twice. Big plays by Tesca. They lead 14-7. End of one here in Memphis on Thursday Night Football on ESPN. Start of the second quarter, Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium here in Memphis and Navy. They threw a touchdown pass and a long run. They're up 14-7 on the home team of Memphis. Tigers have won four straight in this series. Matt Berry, Dan Mullen, Harry Lyles with you. Quick shot from Seth Hennigan trying to get his receivers involved. The ball fell on the turf. Looked like Rock Taylor there to recover. And a gain of two. And right now, Coach, Memphis' offense. The oh, a little bit. I, I, that ball might have been coming out right there. Are they going to stop this? No. Taylor was able to fall on it. Joseph oh, Skates was the it. one okay. that fumbled. It was a clear, yeah, clear recovery by Rock. So third and six. Here comes the pressure from Navy. Hennigan has to plant that back foot. Goes up top, misses his receiver, Rock Taylor. And now Navy's defense has stepped up. And they are, they are not holding back right now. They are coming at him from every different angle. They brought a lot of edge pressures, disguising looks, and this one's coming right up the middle right here. And you see him take it. He got. He, he had the one-on-one -on -one matchup down the field. He had to get rid of that ball a little sooner than he wanted to, and because of the timings thrown off, the incomplete pass, Navy forces the punt. Colin Ramos there on the pressure. Memphis, it's that first drive, they've been stymied. A fair catch by Amin Hassan. After a punt of 38 yards. A place for touchdowns to be passed down from generation to generation. To generation. Verba, football away, baby. So the Memphis defense going to try to get something going, Harry. You said pretty emotional down there on the sidelines. Quite emotional, Matt. As soon as they came back down here, Jeffrey Kenton, our coup, was screaming at his troops. Spit flying out of his mouth. Things we can't repeat on TV. Let's see if that energy translates here on this possession. So it's still Lava Tai at quarterback, and it's still Daba Fofana right up the middle, and they are getting chunk yards now, gain of 12. And that's where we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing too many missed tackles right now from this Memphis defense. These short runs are turning into bigger plays right now. And you see that. It's Fafano, it's Fafano, it's Tesca breaking that first tackle and creating these 10, 12-yard runs. Chandler Martin, one of the early leaders on this Memphis defense, missed the tackle there, and it's going to be a first down mid. Two backs, Lavatai keeps it, the pitch out. And again, slipping through tackles early on. Memphis missed tackles on Fofana. Had him probably for no gain. He was able to get five out of it. And, and that's that's where you get frustrated. The coaching staff right there. Eyes are perfect. You have the assignment sound. We, we took the dive. We took the quarterback. We have a guy in position for the pitch. And these broken tackles are letting Navy stay on schedule right where they want to be running the football. Right at the mesh, Lavatai fumbled and just what the Memphis defense needed forced a turnover in Navy territory. Such a big play right here, and you're going to see it right now. It's just the miss, the pull right there. Lavatai tried to pull it, was looking to get a pitch out, gets the ball caught on the hip. It's a fumble, turnover, Memphis in plus territory. Primetime matchups this Saturday. Number 11, Tennessee travels to the Swamp to take on Florida 7 Eastern and Coach Prime. Number 18, Colorado, talk of sports, not just college football, squares off against Colorado State in the Rocky Mountain Showdown, 10 Eastern, ESPN. It's going to be a fun Saturday night. Get some caffeine oh, to stay up late. Cannot wait. Here's Watson, and he is 
corralled by the Navy defense. Colin Ramos here in a loss of one. Great job by Navy's defense, who again has shown up early in this one. Coach Prime already, every week there's something. Did you see the stuff with Jay Norvell today? <laughs> talking about, he I, said, I, when, when, I'm gonna, when I'm talking to adults, I take my sunglasses off and my hat off. Prime has already responded saying, now Jay's made it personal, and here we go again. Yeah, they're just giving motivation to the, to the Colorado team that doesn't already need it. They're playing with so much confidence, and people just keep motivating them. So a loss of one end around from Memphis. That's Rock Taylor, and Rock Taylor cannot get away from the mids. What a great defensive play in a loss of eight. And that's uh, is, is, is MBD, uh Williams coming in to make the tackle right there. And they said right now that he is one of the hardest workers on this team. And you see the pressure coming off the backside. But watch them get up the field and set the edge. They're setting the edge, getting up the field on this Memphis defense and pinning on the Memphis offense are and pinning them back inside. It is now third and 20. And this is what you want coming off a turnover right there. Sudden change defense to come out and close the door on the offense. Especially with the field position Memphis was given. Hennigan just has to dump it over the middle to Watson. Watson trying to get some of that back. Colin Ramos there on the tackle. Crowd not happy with it after a gain of five. Well, and the tough one right there, and Hennigan, they, they get a little worried. But that's a great read by Hennigan. Don't force the ball down there in a mistake. Check it down. You're on plus side. You're a broken tackle away from getting into Gopher on fourth down territory. So you like that, what they just did. I, I think you're okay making that decision. All right. Because it gives you the opportunity. You put the pressure on the coach to potentially have to go for it on fourth down. Didn't gain enough with it, so they're going to punt, but it puts the pressure on the coach. So Reed Bauer to punt. Going to try to flip that field back. And we've got to, oh, that is good special teams. And yet, that's why you do it. Don't so now force some mistakes. See, now the coach is like, see? Coach like, I knew what I was doing. Five yard check down, <laughs> punts him to the five yard line. Went exactly according to plan. The punter's pumped. So are we. Navy's ball when we come back. Long student sections across the country are competing to be the Taco Bell Live Moss Student Section of the Year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. It's one thing the great city of Memphis knows how to do, it's to have fun. Dan Mullen, Matt Berry, Harry Lyles back with you. And how about ball control early on? Would you have bet <laughs> that Memphis would be winning the time of possession on Navy but losing the game? And, Na and Navy has the explosive play edge right now. A, a complete opposite of what you wanted to see. But in that Taco Bell student section, this is why you do it. You've pinned the Navy offense right in front of this Memphis student section, trying to create some new noise and help this defense out. Lavatai still in at quarterback. The handoff quickly stopped by Memphis. Alex Tesca, who's had a big first half, brought down five carries, 124 yards, and a touchdown for Tesca. And that's the key. When you're playing a Navy offense, even though they are a different look Navy offense, you want to get them off schedule. You want to prevent them. Get them into second down and nine. And get and that gives you opportunity now to put them, put the pressure on Navy to have to get to third and short where they want to have it. Harry gave us the report about Jeffrey Canton Arku giving his defense an earful. They had the turnover since, and now they'll have a third down look. Tesco, the ball carrier, and a gain of six. But this is where it has to happen. You talked about flipping the field. If you can get a three and out here, you're going to get good field position. And, and right in front of the student section, third and three, these are the plays you have to make if you want to you beat Navy. And you have to battle and slow this offense down. It's the third and three plays. They come out in this unbalanced, overloaded look, again, trying to show all the different looks to the Memphis defense. Third and three, up the middle. And that's going to be a first down Navy. And a gain of four, Lavatai kept it. And one of the challenges on a short week, with these unbalanced looks that Navy is showing right now, is trying to get a line to it. This is the quarterback dunk right here. You see that the quarterback is reading the defensive, the three technique, the guy over the guard right there. If he tackles the back, he pulls it. The left eye kind of just followed his That's pullback it. right up in the kinda hole on that one right there. Kind of just got lost in the wash. It's like, I can get three doing this. So a big first down for Navy to move the ball upfield a little bit. Oh. Keeper slipped. 
the that, play was on. That's the more traditional type triple option we're used to seeing. And it's always a tough adjustment. You're seeing Memphis come out. They're, they're a big four down defensive front where they play the four down defensive linemen. Uh, they're into more of an odd and what we call a bear look where they have all of the offensive linemen covered up. And that's sometimes you're not in the normal defense that you're in when you have to play these teams. Injured player down on the field from Memphis is Jeffrey Canton Arku as we kick it back to the studio and Kevin Connors. Miami and Bethune Cookman over on the ACC network. Tyler Van Dyke going to hook up with Jacoby George. Van Dyke had five touchdown passes last week in the win over AM. He's thrown for one, run for one. Mario Cristobal's team 27 0 in the second. Kevin Connors, not only did Tyler Van Dyke have a big week last week against Texas A&M, he got the coveted helmet sticker on college football final. Which is pretty impressive. That, that, is, that is, that is, is there a bigger honor? No, no, no. College the, the football biggest than individual, individual award in college sports, the helmet sticker college football final. <laughs> All right, so they, they're going to tend to Jeffrey Cantu Arku, who did come off the field under his own power. We're going to step aside, come back, Navy ball after this. All right, so both Jeffrey Canton, Arku, and William Whitlow injured for Memphis. Bryce Edmondson now in the game, taken over for one of their defensive leaders in a second and nine for Navy. Pulls it, lava tie, shot over the middle. Oh, he had his man beat. Intended for Nathan Kent. Coach, that's completed. That's going for a long way, perhaps a touchdown. It is, and he they think Nathan Kent is their top playmaking wide receiver. He was healthy now. He's been banged up a little bit so far this season. But that hit him right between the eight and the two. Ty Lavatai with a great throw off the play action right there, hitting that little skinny glance on the backside. DJ Bell was on coverage, and that is a miss for Navy. They could have easily gone up 21-7. But nonetheless, Bunch set down, third and nine. Lavatai to throw. Has time, swings it back to the right side. Navy's defense, or Navy's offense rather, another first down. The Memphis defense struggling with their tackling. Daba Fofana looked like he was going to be held short. He gets a gain of 17. And this is this has really been the story of the first half of the broken tackles by Fafana and Tesca, Tesca on by this Navy offense and the missed tackles. One, two, no wrap up. Great blocking down the field. They, they, they miss tackles. You're giving Navy opportunities, controlling the clock, flipping field possession, and that's what you cannot do playing this Navy team. One of those missed tackles, Edmondson, who is in for Canton Arku as Lavatai keeps it as we go down to Harry. He's going to be going back in this football game. All right, Harry, thank you very much. Canton Arku, the transfer from Syracuse. Coaches were talking about him and his leadership ability. He's got that French-Canadian accent. Sometimes they said when he's yelling at the team or talking to him, you can't understand what he's saying because the French-Canadian accent. <laughs> they said just in return, they try to talk to him the same way. Yeah, Coach said every once in a while, they try to do some imitations of, of his accent so that, that he understands what, the, what they're saying. So Navy continues the rotation of the offensive line. And the handoff to the outside. And that was a good job by Memphis's defense getting to the ball and a loss of one led by Hank Pearson. And setting the edge. That's what we haven't seen. They've set the edge on this defense. We talked about it right now. You set the edge and do not let Navy get the ball on the perimeter right now. You put Navy into the uncomfortable situation, third and long, having to pass. And this plays the strength of the Memphis defense. Two of two on this possession on third down. And Hank Pearson's an example of what they told us. They love the depth of their defensive line. Pearson already getting in there. And a big third and ten now with 6.25 and counting left in the first half. Lavatai in the shotgun. Fofana the setback. Motion in. Lavatai pulls it, throws it, incomplete. And this time they got pressure on Lavatai. That was the same play they, they threw a couple plays ago. Off the play action, trying to hit the glance on the backside to the wide receiver. And then this time the pressure gets to him. And Lavatai not able to set his feet. You see it. Little play action. Get there. Pressure coming in on him right there. Throws it a little sooner, misses the throw. And they have, that play was open twice, though. See him come back to it. They have one drop and one missed throw on a play that's been open. Chandler Martin with the pressure. Evan Warren to punt. 
Check that Riley Reeves in the punt. Kobe Drake dropped immediately. Great coverage right there down the field. And Raithman's one of the best punters in, in Navy history right now. Uh, was on the uh, the grade eight last week on the Ray Guy Award watch list. But this is what, they remember that last possession, Navy started back to the wall deep in Memphis territory. This is what they want to do. Flip the field and try to pin Memphis deep. And let's see if they're going to keep heating them up. And the Navy defense has played really, really well tonight. A lot of pressure on Seth Hennigan and Memphis unable to get anything going. And it is. And they're coming from all different looks, trying to disguise different looks with guys blitzing everywhere. And they are flying to the football right there, stopping this Memphis run, running attack, creating the athletes, getting them onto the ground. So first down from Memphis, and there's that defense again. They are flying to the football. Watson unable to get anything, maybe a gain of two. And when you look at this Memphis offense, it's done. That first drive, Coach, they went 13 plays, 90 yards. The last three drives, they've got 11 plays, 16 yards. <laughs> And you're hearing the pats pop right down there. Playing. They are flying to the football. That's what they want to see. I mean, you have a defensive head coach. That's what he wants to see. They're showing everybody on the line of scrimmage in this man look again. Let's see if Memphis can max protect and take a deep shot off of this. Second and eight. Hennigan looking deep. Trying to take the first shot. Under throws his receiver. That was intended for Kobe Drake. Rayon Lane on the coverage. And I'm telling you what, that shows, Rayon Lane talked about this, about this in, in the meeting the other day. The confidence that the coaching staff has, put him on an island, play man coverage, go blitz. We're confident back here. He's the leader of that defense, and the, he's their best player on the defense. And he said, I'm comfortable. You can put me on an island. I'll play man coverage. Kind of an odd situation with the snap. Offensive line didn't go anywhere. I don't even see a flag on the field. Your guess is as good as mine. The offensive like line's some, some miscommunication. Maybe they thought somewhat they jumped offside, but that, it, it, the they, play's they, gonna stand. Yeah, it's gonna that, be it's gonna be three and out, and they're gonna punt. And that's a, that's that's another three and out here that this Navy defense has created. I'm the only person that moved on that play, the center and Hennigan, and everyone else just stood there. And a lot of those times, that's when someone jumps offside, the center snaps the ball, trying to get the cheap five yards, but I didn't see anybody jump into the neutral zone. So another punt. Amin Hassan catches it in his 30 and a punt of 49. So Amin Hassan there for the punt return, and we talked about the Navy get six and the things that they feel that if they get six of, they're going to put themselves in a good position to win. And so far, the three and outs have been there. And they've gotten three of the six so far. They feel that if they can do this defensively, they're going to win the game. They need to, a total of six, three and outs, a fourth down stop, and turnovers. So far in the first half, they've created three three and outs right now on, this, on the Memphis team. They're controlling the ball. This is the type of game Navy wants to play. And that defense continues to put their offense in a good position. The thing that sticks out with the get six 15 and three with Newberry when they get what they're looking for of those six quick tackle on Tesca after a gain of two five minutes here in the first half Hank Pearson again on the tackle and this is something even new with this this Navy if you look they get back up on the ball they run more a little bit of a no huddle type look not that they're going in a hurry but just to put some pressure on the defense to not let you get your heels in the ground show different looks and try to confuse you within your option assignments on the defensive side we of the ball. We thought we'd see Blake Horvath in the first half but it's been all lava time because they've been in a good offensive rhythm here a quick hit after the Kamari Williams catch. Diago Brumfield after one and third down. And great coverage out there. The break on the ball, tried to go quick game. You know, and that's that's a tough one. You're trying to throw a quick game. You, the receiver's got to get some more, a little bit more depth to push off the ball in that route. You don't want to have to throw that for a one-yard game. All three timeouts for both teams. Four of six on third down tonight for Navy. We've seen it tonight, the bunch formation, top of the screen, Lavatai the shotgun. Tesca the setback, quick throw to the outside. Memphis defense can't get there, and a first down Navy, Eli Heidenreich 
tackled by Canton Arku at a gain of 13. Great effort. You can't Arku going to track that down from out there. But this is that name. That, that looks like a play you're going to see everywhere from spread offenses around the country. Little, You're running a little zone play. You throw the bubble screen on the outside. Great blocking by the receivers in the perimeter. Another missed tackle by Memphis. First down Navy. The drive continues. Hey, Coach, I don't know if you can underrate the changes that this offense has made this season based on what we've seen out of Navy historically. And a good play there as Lapatai keeps it in a gain of one. Carmonte Hamilton, they still do Navy stuff. They still run the ball 74% of the time. But the bunch formations and some of the throws we've seen tonight, that's new. It is, it is. And it's, it's not way out of the wheelhouse for them to be able to do it. They're just adding some wrinkles that they haven't done in the past. And, and they're not complicated plays. Little throws, little throws like that their quarterbacks watching them in warm-ups their quarterback can throw the ball pretty well and they're giving them putting in, pos in positions to stress the defense you said in our meetings as Navy and, and Memphis rotate in a few fresh players you said in our meetings that this they're gonna have to take really... a time out here Navy is they with the, the substitutions all right, so we'll table that conversation for a minute and talk about how the Navy offense is really the base for every offense around the country. Their first time out of the half, 232 left. Navy with the ball up 14-7. Studio coming up on the Twisted T halftime report. We'll get the thoughts of our national champion Trevor Maddich on our first half, plus check in on a ranked Miami team in action tonight and consider what makes Shador Sanders elite and we'll talk about the historic start the Pac-12 is off to. Matt, I'm not sure how much time we have, but it's all coming up on the Twisted T Halftime Report. Kevin Connors, you, you'll get the correct amount at halftime. Chris Rivietso, producer to the Stars, he'll figure it out. This Tesco figured his way through the middle of the line. Gain of six, Chandler Martin there. But I do real quickly, how about the Pac-12? That's pretty impressive. phenomenal start to the season. Let's just blow the whole damn. And I know up. you're a Pac-12 guy Pac -12 right there. Guy. You're you 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 believe like you're prime. You're you're like prime. You believe, but you believe in the conference. I we said going into the season, I thought it was going to be the most exciting conference this year. Not only is it the most exciting, it might probably the best conference so far this yeah. year in all of college. Football. I want overtime in this game so I can get on my Pac-12 soapbox for the next two and a half hours. Big third and three up the middle, short. Big decision here for Coach Newberry in his first year. And I mean, this is traditional Navy GOAT territory. You go for this. And he's not even hesitating. Yeah, They're go. just going right away, uh, right now. Here's why you go. Your defense has been phenomenal. You've got a 14-7 lead on the road. Minute 30 left, you go. And he is. Big play here for the Memphis defense to try to get a stop at something right before the half. And they get it. He's going to be short. Josh Ellison, the first man there. And one of the coveted Juco transfers in this class gets the stop. Memphis now has the ball in three timeouts. It is, and you see him now. They've made an adjustment right there. The unbalanced look with the offensive line over to the strong side for Navy. You see the defensive line with the big adjustment onto that side of the field. Huge stop by the Memphis defense. A minute 19, and they're an explosive offense to go work. They have the opportunity. They get the ball to start the second half, too. They can try to get two possessions for one right here. And here it is, Coach. Despite everything that's gone right for Navy and wrong for Memphis, they get some points going into the half. It's a huge flip, huge momentum change. They start with the ball to start the third quarter, so this could be a two-for-one situation for Hennigan and the Tigers. Ball just shy of the 45. Quick shot for Hennigan outside. That skates. And that's what you want to do when you start in a two-minute situation like this. You see a lot of teams take a quick, easy throw, get yourself into the flow and the rhythm of the two-minute offense. Again, all three timeouts left for Memphis. Clock now stops under two minutes in the new college football rules. Those have been a hot topic on social media and coaches before halftime. What, what is with you coaches? Man? Yeah, they Bowling, are. You guys coaches are, are paranoid about just, everything. I don't so know what their problem is. Spring loaded. <laughs> Second and three. Here comes the blitz. Hennigan gets it off. That skates again. Skates past the first down marker into Navy territory to the 40. And a gain of nine tackled by Ramos. And a great job by Hennigan. He saw the blitz coming. Blitz came from way on the outside. 
held the ball, held the ball, held the ball, waited for his receiver to come across the formation, give him a nice, easy cat throw that he can catch and run with. Ramos made the tackle. He is the Navy injured player. They'll look at him as we look to kick off your week two of NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern with the countdown crew on ESPN, the ESPN app. They'll have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, and previews of each game right up until kickoff. And then week two, Monday night, man, we got a doubleheader. 7 Eastern ESPN, Saints, Panthers, and then on ABC, 8 Eastern, the Browns and the Steelers. I mean, it's your move week two because week one of NFL Monday Night Football was absolutely incredible. And you know what's better than Monday Night Football game? Two Monday Night, two football, Monday games. night football games. Memphis has certainly <laughs> put their fair share of players in the NFL. Snap off, handing it over the middle. And they're starting to find the zone, the soft spot that they hit early, Coach, in a timeout after a gain of six. Rock Taylor on the reception. Yeah, and just comfort. You, you just see it, though, in, in Seth Hennigan and his maturity as a third-year player. Not rattled, not trying to press right now. Even, even though the offense the last couple series has struggled, he's not pressing. He's getting into his rhythm, relaxed, just taking what the defense gives you. And you just see it even his demeanor out there on the field, very relaxed, making the throws. We talked about, we showed the second ago, the facilities here at Memphis. We had put something out on our ESPN College Football YouTube channel about what this program they have NFL lineage. They've sent some really good players to the league. The facilities are good. This is one of those programs across the country. And we visit, you're like, you know what? That place, that's a hidden gem that could be great with the talent in the area and the facilities to match. Yeah, I mean, a great recruiting area. Their facilities are unbelievable. Brand new indoor facility, the uh, standalone football facility. Uh, they can compete uh, facility-wise with a lot of Power 5 schools. So second and four, under a minute, still two timeouts for Memphis. Hennigan keeps his eyes downfield again. He's been checking down a lot. Watson makes the first man miss, and that is a great individual effort trying to get Blake Watson going again. He scored the touchdown in a gain of 10, and here's Memphis in momentum. Well, and, and a great guy. It's okay to check down when you have a great player to check it down to. Watson, a great receiver, and obviously special once he gets the ball in his Woodson hands. Woodson Brooks missed the tackle. Quick shot to the outside. That's Rock. And a gain of five. Avon Gibson on the tackle, forces him out. And now you've seen Memphis, a lot of short throws, quick game, not afraid to check it down. And you see them taking shots as people wonder, why aren't they throwing it down the field? They're calling plays to. It's Seth Hennigan's maturity. If it's not there, I'm not going to force it. I'll check it down. We'll play it another time. Watch the quick snap here, maybe. Are they going to look to the sidelines? We saw him. To try to run some trick plays. This is where you get into some of your deceptive plays down here in the red zone. Doing a good job using the clock as well. Still have the two timeouts. Hennigan with time. He's got the time to pull it down, and he'll do that. Gets down safely. First down, Memphis. Gain of seven. And stops the clock momentarily right now with the old clock rules under two minutes. Chance to call the play, get everybody lined up, get them set. Still the two to use if they want. Hennigan over the middle. They probably use one, use one here, here. Yep. to Rock Taylor. He's been busy. Andrew Duhart on the tackle. That'll be their second timeout. So 26 seconds left. Down 14-7, one timeout. Walk me through your playbook and what you would want to do here. Well, the, the great thing is you have a, a quarterback that's a veteran guy. So you're going to sit and just say, hey, know the situation. we got a timeout if we need it. You don't need it. So we don't have to force the ball down the field. But let's just pay attention to the clock. If we get tackled inbounds short of the first down and the clock's going to be running, they're going to tell him we're already going to make that decision. We'll probably take the timeout at that point. If we get out of bounds, obviously, incomplete pass, we don't have to. So he's got that clock in his head. He sure. knows what's going on. And that's the comfort, as you see, of having a guy that they're going to put a lot on his shoulders and having that, that coach on the field, a coach's son out there that understands the situation, has the cerebral part of the game down. How do you feel about a designed quarterback run here? I, it's a great call because you, you still have the timeout. Everything's on the table when you still have that one timeout. Eighth play of the drive, second and five. Hennigan, end zone, Hennigan, touchdown! Rock Taylor. Seven yard throw.
Rock went one-on-one -on -one with Deshaun Peel, who was back from a hamstring injury, and he won it. And you see this right here, Hennigan, nice ball. Give your 6-3 a receiver a chance, put it up high to the outside right there, where it's gonna be him or nobody making the catch. Rock, great job with body position, goes up, catches the ball at the high point, gets a foot down inbounds, and a huge momentum swing here at the end of the first half with the fourth down stop and the touchdown. Flag on the extra point. Hennigan, 7 of 7, 49 yards, and a touchdown in that drive. He had the big seven-yard run. And we had just talked about the two for one. They're going to call running into the kicker. That'll be assessed on the kickoff. Now, now, you have an interesting coach's situation right here now. You move the ball up 15 yards, you're kicking from the 50-yard line. Looks like they're going to decline it. Okay. So is it, let's see. Kevin Randall waiting for his moment. Running into the kicker, receiving team, number 18. That penalty is declined, the try is good. It was a on lane. The Starkville, Mississippi native. Yeah, right there, came Kevin up to you and said, coach from Starkville. But the reason they declined that right there, it wasn't the personal foul 15 yard type. It's the five-yard type, so it had to have been accepted on that play. If that would have been a personal foul they, there, they could have assessed it on the kickoff. So, and we had talked about the two-for-one uh, that was going to be big for Memphis because Navy received the ball. So all of that work Navy did to get up 14-7. Now Memphis comes down, ties it, and gets the ball to start the third quarter. And now if you're Navy, I, I'm going to do something with you this year because we've got a, a successful head coach in the booth with us. I'm going to just throw out some hypotheticals and I'm going to let you tell me that's the smartest thing I've ever heard or that's the dumbest thing you've ever heard. <laughs> for me, for, for Navy, sit on it and get to the half. Absolutely. Okay. Not, not even a thought, unless, for whatever reason, unless you, you break a kick right here or something, they're just going to get into halftime. They played really good defense in the first half. Right here. They'll take a knee. I, I don't know. They, they might run a dive play right here up and the middle. They'll see if they break because, they, because they've had some success with it. But I don't see them trying to push the ball down the field or do anything. They're going to get the half and get ready for the second half. 23 seconds left in the half. Assess what you've seen so far. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I'm really impressed with this Navy offense and their physicality. Coach talked about they, they, we need to bring toughness back to the offense, and that's been really impressive watching them in this first half, how physical they're playing at the line of scrimmage and how physical the backs are running the ball. Nailed it. Take a knee. See? There you I, go. I, I can coach. coach. Right. Come on. It's, all right. it's overrated, isn't it? You're right. You just go, <laughs> you throw on some sunglasses and a hat, recruit, and you're good. <laughs> Right there, you got it down. So, a very entertaining first half. And by the way, zero penalties. That first flag, it was declined. We had one penalty, if you're counting that, in the first half. Pretty clean half of football. Very, very clean half of football. And I, I'll tell you, what, good football by both teams is what you want to see. You have guys being able to run ball, executing on offense. Defense is flying around. We've had momentum changes go back and forth uh, in this first half. It's going to be an exciting second half coming our way. I love this first half, tied at 14 apiece in our Thursday night kickoff opener down to Harry. Coach, very first possession, very last possession on offense. Tons of success. What do you got to do in the second half to replicate those? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we're not doing what we need to. We're not executing at a high level. Too many missed assignments. Uh, we got to find to make plays on offense. And then, you know, defensively, we're not tackling very well. Obviously, we gave up the explosive pitch play down the sideline and too many missed tackles. It's going to be a long night if we don't get that cleaned up. Who specifically on your defense do you feel like you need to see step up in order to help stop this triple option? All 11 out there every single time. That's the thing about the triple option. All 11 have to do their job over and over and over. And right now, we're not doing so. We gotta be cleaner our tackling and we gotta go out and find a way to execute on offense and special teams, find a way to come up with a victory. Thanks, coach. Thanks, guys. Harry coach, thank you. We are tied at 14 apiece. Time now for the Twisted T halftime report. We'll send it to our guys in studio, Kevin Connors and Trevor Madison. See you guys back here in third quarter in just a few minutes. All right, Maddie, a first half where Navy outgains Memphis, and yet they hit the halftime locker room tied at 14 apiece. Twisted T halftime report with BYU national champion Trevor Maddich. Kevin Connors here. Second half just about underway as you were watching the American Conference on ESPN. 
is we are walking in Memphis, historic Beale Street, tied up at 14 all after an entertaining first half as we take a look at tonight's game flow brought to you by Progressive, and it was the big plays early for Navy. Yeah, Alex Tesco wasn't walking in Memphis. He was running in Memphis. 141 yards in the first half. The explosive play and being able to run away from that Memphis defense. Then the play action pass. Navy getting the ball into the end zone through the air. But the two-minute drill at the end of the half, and you just saw Hennigan come down, the poise, the calmness, leading the team, tying the game, and really claiming mem uh, uh, momentum back for Memphis as we start this second half kick. Onside kick for Navy to begin, and it went out of bounds, so that'll be a procedure penalty. But how about Newberry trying to make a statement right out of the gate? Heck, I, I like the call. You, you know, you're coming out, you're trying to steal a possession. You know, they talk about their get six. A lot of that is how are you kind of getting different possessions, creating possessions in the game. Down to here. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Talked to the half. He said, we've been playing a great game. One of the things we've got to do is stop shooting ourselves in the first foot. down. All right, fire away, Harry. Guys, one of the things that Brian Newberry and I talked to the half, he said they've loved how they play as far as lovely scene out of Ty Laptai, but he said the one thing they got to do is stop shooting themselves in the foot in this game. Yeah, they talked about, Harry, thank you. They talked about coming out of the Notre Dame game maybe early on in the season. The tackling wasn't where they wanted to be. But I'll, I'll tell you, minus a couple of drops by the receivers, I don't think you could ask for a better execution half than you got from Navy. Excellent. They did have it. They, they had a fumble. The fourth down and short, they didn't convert. And the drop pass, a couple of, there were opportunities for them, but I thought they played very well in the first half. And here they come, coming after them, lining everybody on the line of scrimmage again to start the second half. Hennigan in Memphis, green light here at the field position. And Hennigan just gets it off. I tell you, that pressure came in and Hennigan's slow to get up. Xavier McDonald came in and Hennigan's down. Yeah, let's see, hope he's all right right here, just pointed to his head. But this is what Navy's done. They've come after him all night long and Hennigan's hung in there. He's done a great job hanging in there, delivering the ball against the blitz right here. It's just, it's, it's that, you know, that tackle onto the ground, and you just see the back of his head hit the ground. So and we hope he's all right. Tevin Campbell, the backup quarterback. Tevin Carter, rather, excuse me. From Memphis, local kid, redshirt freshman, big kid, too, Tevin Carter. I'll tell you, he is, we saw him down there on the field. He is a big, big kid. And so Hennigan gets up, looks as if he's okay. They'll probably administer some tests with him on the sidelines. Xavier McDonald brought the pressure. What a story he is. Basically raised his four siblings when they moved yeah. down to South Florida. He worked 35 to 40 hours a week in high school at a grocery store just to make ends meet to raise his siblings. Just a remarkable story for him to end up at the Naval Academy. And now it is Tevin Carter in for now for Hennigan. After a gain of nine, second and one. And a no gain there. Great job by Navy's defense. The energy kind of just got sucked out of the crowd a little bit with Hennigan going down, but it was one play and done. Carter out, Hennigan in. He's Maybe he's got the wind knocked out of him. Hopefully, hopefully that's what it was. His breath. We don't want to speculate, but the way he was laying down on the ground, and obviously it wasn't too serious, down to Harry. Yeah, guys, they did not run any tests on Seth Hennigan. It looks like he might have gotten the wind knocked out of him. Big third and one. Two tight ends set. And again, the keeper, Memphis the first down. And they're not, they must have been the win because they weren't worried about giving him the ball right there and letting him go shoot his way into the middle of that Navy defense. You can just tell by the way that he had landed down, the way that he just, was wrapped up. He kind of, he was taking some big breaths, almost as if it got sucked out of him. But nonetheless, good to see him back out there and healthy and a conversion there on third down. And if you're Memphis, you're Silverfield, you're Tim Cram's the offensive coordinator, but this field position to start the second half, you want to pounce. Ball at the 35. Time, throw. Joseph Skates trying to make a man miss, and that's probably a situation where Skates can get up field. Trying to make a couple of moves, Duhart on the tackle, only a gain of two. 
Yeah, just trying to do a little too much after the catch right there. Get the ball. You always say as a receiver, get the ball and get vertical and then make somebody miss right now. So here, if you're, you're not in high school, just get the ball, get vertical, get what you can get. And if you can make somebody miss going vertically, do that. So now second and seven. There's the same blitz look. Now, now Memphis brought in the tight end to bring an extra blocker into the protection. Gets hit again as he releases, and it falls incomplete. Head again is taking shots. That was intended for Rock Taylor. Duhart was on the coverage. Well, if you look right, they, they bring the tight end in, but then release him. And as you can see right there, that allows the pressure to come off the edge. Xavier McDonald, we just talked about him, the type of young man he is, but coming off the end, and you're getting three shots on Seth Hennigan, and he's taking some big hits in this game. It's not always the sacks, it's the number of hits you get on a quarterback that can throw him off a rhythm. So now third and seven. Coming again. Hennigan up top. Flag caught. Rock Taylor. That matchup's been going back and forth. How about Rock Taylor? He had the touchdown earlier on a one on one ball, and he makes that catch and a flag. Let's see the flag here. They signal touchdown after the play, which usually means it is defensive pass interference. A lot of discussion to make sure they get this call right, right here. The official that threw the flag also signaled touchdown, no, which usually yeah, means no, he, was, he was out of bounds. We've got our rules analyst, Matt Austin, standing by. Matt, let's bring you up here. What, what, what do you think we're discussing here? Well, you were definitely right. The, the runner receiver stepped out of bounds after he did catch the ball. There's a little bit of contact here. I'm not sure if that's what the flag's for or not. I don't see. There is no foul on the play for pass interference. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number six. Also after the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 18, defense. Those fouls cancel, touchdown. Yeah, which we saw right, we, yeah. we, we saw that, that he stepped out of bounds. They're, they're gonna review this right here. But the official that threw the flag signal touchdown. You can see he clearly I mean, it's steps not, out. Okay. Yeah, because what I called it as a, a completion and out of bounds. I don't know. You see him right, right there. I think he saw that the, the pylon get kicked and maybe thought he nicked it or who called touchdown? Right there. You you see him feel uh, maybe we'll I see mean, it here. You see him throw his arms up at the end. Yeah, when you said that, touchdown. I was like, who's who's yeah. who's calling a touchdown? <laughs> But this, this, this is going to come back. We're going to be one for one of the season. This is not going to be a touchdown. That, that's bizarre. Our replay official tonight, Rick Jackson. This probably, this might be the easiest thing he does all year. Yeah, this is pretty quick. If we had a camera up on us here in the booth, we were calling the play. There was a flag down. We knew Rock Taylor made a great catch. And Mola's sitting up here saying, going, it's, it's going to be a touchdown. And you, I looked at you, <laughs> you like, like, I had, like you had just walked out of a Beale Street bar at 3 a.m. Like, what? <laughs> Did you, like, <sighs> yeah. Newberry's probably saying the same thing. But, not, hey, look, it, the fact yeah. of the matter remains that Rock Taylor's having a nice game, and Memphis now in position to regain the lead after they had it after their first possession. Yeah. After but, review, the receiver gained firm control of the ball, had a body part down. However, the runner stepped out of bounds at the one-yard line. The ball will be placed at the one-yard line. It'll be first and goal, Memphis. So now you have, you have the coaching thing down? Yeah. And you have the officiating look, thing down. Right, you could be a replay official. You got it. Like, you know, everybody gets on these coaches and officials. Right. You got it down. It's not that I've got the benefit of a thousand-foot view and replay. <laughs> So, 31-yard play, penalty was declined because of the big play by Rock Taylor. Matt Austin got in the broadcast. Like, we're, we're clicking on all cylinders now. They're going heavy. That's your touchdown. 
Wait, he, there he goes. All right, all right. They were going to make sure this time. It's like, wait a second, we just gave a touchdown. He, he, he got called out the last time. He wanted to make sure this time. I, I saw the massive humanity go over the goal line, but Seth Hennigan gets it in from a one-yard rush after being knocked down in that possession. Seven plays, 53 yards. Memphis regains the lead. And this is what we talked about, the two-for-one, two, two, for two uh, back-to-back -back possessions for Memphis. The score late in the first half, then they get the ball to start the second half. They have scored 14 points. The last time Navy's offense was on the field, they were up 14-7, and now they're down seven. Not a position they want to be in. And that's how you take advantage of it, coming down to end the half, starting the half with the ball in your hands. Remember, Navy attempted an onside kick procedure penalty in a short field for Hennigan of the Tigers after briefly being knocked out for a play. Now 21-14 after the one-yard touchdown run from Hennigan. Now the big one now, what we've seen Navy do, their offense has responded all night long, but they, and they've responded with the big play. And I can tell you uh, that, that the Memphis locker room at, at halftime, and, and defensive coordinator Matt Barnes after a meeting with him yesterday, and, I'm going to tell you, he had a little intensity to him. Oh, yeah. And, then guys, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and he had that look. I, he, I'm sure that was not a, a walk in there saying, hey, guys, we, we you know, we got to tackle a little bit better. Uh, I think there was going to be a little more enthusiasm with that being said. Uh, and, and maybe even some physical things thrown around yeah. the locker room even. But uh, I mean, I, he, he's going to come out and see how these guys tackle in the second half. I've seen that out of you on Swamp Kings. You've been in there at the half trying to get something going. That was colorful. So now the kick to Tyler Bradley. He's going to field it inside the end zone. He's going to bring it out. Bradley to the 20 is where he loses his feet and where Navy will take over. We'll see who's playing quarterback for the Mids this season for every every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities. All state will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. As always, thank you, All State. And it's Ty Lavatai still in. They have the coaching staff has said they really wanted to get Blake Horvath in. I thought we would see him in the first half, get a couple of snaps. I still think we'll see him here at some point in the second half. But Ty Labatai's done a good job leading this offense. Well, and the rhythm that they had established in the first quarter has kind of gone away just a touch. Labatai makes good decisions. That's why they like him in there. Remember, he had 10 starts as a sophomore, eight starts as a junior. Then he injured his knee against Temple. But he's played a good football game tonight. They're tackled by Greg Rubin. Is come out right to their, you know, bread and butter, come out to the run, the, the triple option. Uh, and, and they want to establish a good drive here and respond to those back-to-back -back Memphis scores. You know, Navy typically 13, 14 play drives. Their scores in the first half all done by big plays. On the time to pitch out. Memphis defenders there. And again, Memphis defenders unable to tackle. They've read the plays perfectly, but there Fofana gets away, and he breaks through for five yards. And, and let's give Fofana and Tezka both a lot of credit tonight. These two guys have run the ball hard all night long. This is a speed option. Quarterback's just pitching off the end man of line of scrimmage. Fafana freezes his feet and then gets around to the outside. He is a physical. These, these guys are physical runners, and they're running through the arm tackles of Memphis. Brumfield was there, unable to make the tackle. So first and ten, Lavatai going to take a shot. Has a receiver wide open. There goes Chapman, and what a big play. Just talked about it a second ago. Flag at the end of the play. Navy's been hitting it with big plays all night. This another one for 58 yards. And every time they've needed it, I know Navy teams in the past, you go and you watch them throw the ball, and they have guys open on the play action, but it doesn't look comfortable. Here, they run a double post. You see the wheel coming in behind it. Lavatai, great job. The free safety takes the first post, throws to the second post, coming up over the top. And the confidence of how Navy throws the ball is what really is different Personal with foul, this team. Face mask, defense, number 35. Grab the helmet opening. Half the distance to the goal. First down. And the penalty and the, and the beat on completion, DJ Bell, he's had a rough night getting beat by these Navy receivers. He got beat again. 
and Chapman a big play. Well, and the hard part is, and you look at that, and one of the things Navy makes all these corners do is you see the ball getting on the edge, and they're going to make your corners have to tackle in the run game. And that gets pounded in so much, and you have the, the eyes. Coaches talk about the eyes. You, you're you looking and saying, I got to go make these tackles. Well, coach talked about it at halftime, and you have bad eyes, and the uh, receiver gets behind you. So Bell taken off the field. Navy within striking distance. Lavatai has to keep it. Memphis's defense is there. Good stop right there. He had his tight end early, and he couldn't get his hips around to make the throw. By the time he was ready to make the throw, the Navy defense had recovered. Jalen Allen there to trip him up. Now second and goal. And a fast start to this third quarter here in Memphis. Come on, the straight T formation again. Motion out of the backfield. Lava tie to keep it. Memphis defense there. Now third and goal. And a lot of substitution, yeah. Bringing in a whole new defensive. And, and Navy, Navy switching it up, going back to their base personnel, getting out of that goal line personnel. Here on third and goal at the three. Five of eight tonight, Navy on third downs. And a big one here. Two receivers down at the bottom of your screen. Tight back formation and a timeout from Memphis. That was, that was, a, that was a, a different looking formation right there from Navy. I, a lot of times I coach your group right here like this doesn't look good. I'm running down the field. But we're going to talk this one over right now. That's why Silverfield sprinted down as a way to <laughs> not seen this. But what did I was kind of I was excited to see what they were trying to do right well, there. Nate Silverfield <laughs> wasn't. He's like, we're gonna pause that for a minute as we go to over 30 AAC games on ESPN Plus this season. Saturday's featured matchups. Charlotte, new to the conference, they host Georgia State at 6 Eastern. Then Louisiana visits UAB, that kick at 7 Eastern. If you're an AAC fan, you gotta have it. Sign up today, ESPNplus.com slash AAC. New look AC with teams leaving the conference. UCF left this year. Cincinnati left this year. Got the Big 12. Houston, a member of the Big 12 now. So here we go. Third and goal. Back to the big set with the straight T formation. Right up the gut. Right into the end zone. And Navy answers. Anton Hall Jr. Set up by the Brandon Chapman pass, and we have ourselves a football game here tonight. What a great drive by the midshipman right there. Every time that Memphis seems to get some momentum, the Navy offense comes up with big plays and responses all night long. We get another shot at it right now. All right, so there's a review of whether or not he scored. Again, I don't know what the drama would be with this one. First guess from here looks like he was in. Let's bring in Matt Austin. Matt, Matt I, look, I tell you, we, we had a pace, a good pace going, not many penalties. <laughs> do, do, what do we see here? Well, I don't see anything, any view that you could overturn. That knee might have got down to the ground before the ball broke the plane, but we need a shot right down the goal line to be able to tell. Here's a good look. Let's see. Again, can't see you his know, knees. I, you know what I think? I, I think this will be the look of the knee. I think he's up. I think they have the yips right now. Yeah. Like the Maddie and Mullen Cup yips. <laughs> where, right. because of the call down in the pylon over there, <laughs> they, they, they're like, wait a second. Hold on. Where's... You, are you going with, with, with call stands on this one? 100%. Yeah. Stands, touchdown. All right, two for two. Yeah. All right, look. Two for two. Get it right. Yeah. A few yips early in the season. Extra point away from a tie ball game. It's been entertaining. Evan Warren.
All right, now we'll play. Oh. Missed it. Oh. No. I, I can see it. Good, yeah, it was good. That was an early, early jump on me. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> it wasn't pretty. That, that's a dollar for that's me jumping dollar. on it. <laughs> but I tell you what, Navy came to play. Six plays, 85 yards, a dollar later, it's 21 all. <laughs>
they're throwing their hats out there. They're, I mean, they are playing hard football, and they, Memphis is a tie ball game, but they've had to work for every bit of it. And, and, and it's been really interesting. The first two weeks of the season, Navy obviously played Notre Dame in week zero. Uh, it was a tough game. A, a, a kind of a sloppy win over Wagner last weekend. Memphis kind of cruised their first two games. This is a challenge back and forth. Third and four, good quarterback and by head again to step up in the pocket. And they rule it incomplete. Intended for Demir Blankopsy. The transfer from Toledo. Hennigan put it on him. He couldn't hang on to it. Yeah, and, a, and a great job right here. They, they, they get the protection down. Good read. Puts it on him. Really, really good play by Rayon Lane. The best player on that Navy defense. The closing speed getting there. And it looks like just gets enough and a hand on the ball to knock it away and force the field goal. So Seth Morgan on for a 50-yard attempt. Transferred in from Sam Houston State. No good. And Navy, look at the sideline right now, though. This, this team's fired up. So Silverfield elects the field goal. They miss. Morgan misses left. And right now, Navy's playing inspired, tied at 21. They have the longest deployment of any team in college football this year. The midshipmen, August 26, they were in Ireland. They did fly to that. Yes. To play Notre Dame. Okay, that was August 26. Then they played the game after in the traditional Army-Navy game, December 9th. That is a long season. And these kids, you have to remember, when you're at the Naval Academy, their daily schedule and the grind that they go through, it's not like regular college at football all. programs. The academics, we're talking to their guys, these majors that they're in, unbelievable. And the rigors of their daily schedule beyond football is amazing. I have such respect for every single one of these players and the daily grind that they do, football on and off the field, down to Harry. Guys, you know, you talk about the long season for them. One of the people that they brought in on their new staff is Jim Curtsy, who came over from Kennesaw State. They believe they've got one of the best strength coaches in the country to help them endure the long season that you guys were talking about. It was Heidenreich for a gain of six. And yeah, I mean, the studies, it's one of the hardest institutions to get into in America. And they've got to stay eligible. I mean, it is, they serve their country. They're out here playing football. I mean, it is nothing short of miraculous, anything they do. That is a miraculous defensive play. They finally got into the backfield, able to wrap him up and a loss of two. That was Tesca. He's been held in check in the third quarter. Yago Brumfield there. And this is what Memphis wants to see out of the defense. They talk about setting an edge right there. Great job playing the quarterback, the support coming up on, uh, from the uh, from the safety position to come up, or uh, Brumfield, the corner to come up and make the tackle in the backfield for a tackle for loss. Six of nine on third down. Navy's been successful. And I'll tell you, Navy doing this with a hodgepodge offensive line coming in. Right, and it, it, it's different. The comfort they have right now. Third down, incomplete. Good tip to misdirect the throw. And after the missed field goal, Memphis able to get off the field. And they kind of never got a clean look. The snap didn't look clean. Good tip, and a little miscommunication there, it looks like with the, they were trying to go back to run that glance uh, on the backside, and the receiver kept it on a go route. So Jalen Allen there for the tip. Kobe Drake deep to receive the Reithman punt. Kobe Fair catches it at the 20. That's where Memphis will start. We don't know who's coming out at quarterback. Seth Hennigan in the tent. We'll give you an update on him when we return. We saw Seth Hennigan coming out of the tent, but he's been contacted and hit quite a bit tonight, Coach. Yeah, and it's been the pressure. Navy has not sat back. They're coming and blitzing from every direction, off the edge, up the middle, even when he gets out of the pocket, taking shots. This defense is flying around, playing physical, and it's the accumulation of hits on Hennigan all night it can have an effect as the game goes on. So he was in the tent getting looked at. You saw him run out there prior to the commercial break. There he is, first and 10-20, Hennigan to throw. 
And you see right now, Coach, that to Blake Watson has been effective out of the backfield to gain a five. You know, Hennigan's got some happy feet right now because he knows that the pressure's been there all night. They're coming. They're coming in a lot of different directions. They're going to try to go fast here to see if they can throw off the pressure and not let Navy get lined up. They hand it up the middle to Watson. He keeps his feet turning. That's going to be a first down brought down by Landon Robinson. And a gain of nine. Good physical run right there. Churning his legs, running up the middle. They haven't put up great numbers running tonight. That was a good physical run. They were just between showing, the tackles. Showing pressure, get off the edge, back off. Hennigan now looks to the sideline, but you were right about the tempo there on that second down. First and ten. Shot downfield. Overthrows Rock Taylor, incomplete. Elias Larry on the coverage. A second down. That's one of the, they've only taken maybe three shots downfield. Perhaps we thought that would happen a little bit more. We did. I think that maybe the pressures talked them out of it. You're starting to see it now, though, right there. The look to the sideline to change the protection to pick up the blitz that time and slide the line to get the line to pick that blitz up to give Hennigan a little bit more time to take a shot down the field. They're showing the pressure again. Play clock under five. Hennigan gets it off. And you can see him back there. He is looking, no one's open. He is looking, no one's open. He goes down by Jacob Busick in a loss of one. And that's the changeup of looks that Navy's doing right there. They drop eight guys into coverage on that last play right there. So they're showing the blitz looks. Hennigan's been having to get rid of the ball, getting hit. All of a sudden, they drop eight guys into coverage. The throw that he wants to make's not there. He's got to pull the ball down and scramble. So Memphis just 257 yards total offense. We approach the end of the third quarter and a big third and 11. Time. Across the middle, good catch, good throw, and instead of getting upfield, he's short of the first down, Demir Blankovsi, tackled by Colin Ramos at a gain of eight. And we, we've seen that a couple of times right now with, the, with, these, with these Memphis receivers right now. Great job by Hennigan. Good route by Blankovsi. Gets inside, you see, just turned up. Get up field. Had the first down and then lost it. Running backwards. And, and Colin Ramos, preseason all AAC player with the great tackle to force the punt. That is an easy first down if he just gets north. And instead, Memphis punts. And that's going to be a flag for catch interference. A Julian Barnett. Tyler Bradley was deep. Check that. I mean, Hassan was back deep. That, that, that's back-to-back -back miscues by Memphis. Yeah, and, and Ryan Silverfield can't be happy. He talked about you know, the, the team. You know, obviously, defensively, they were, they were upset with missed assignments and some mistakes. But, we, but we've seen that. When you have that opportunity, you talk about it. You have the first down set. You protect the quarterback. Kick, looking to convert a third one. Kicking team, number two. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. All right, now let's take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Allstate. Same as it ever was with Georgia and Michigan, one and two. Florida State now at three. Texas following their big win against Alabama up at four. And USC now five. Ohio State, Penn State six and seven. This, I, this is the weekend, though, right? When you, you don't have all those big marquee matchups uh, and ranked versus ranked, be that, chaos, that chaos ensues. Be cautious of being the person that says there's no big games on the slate, because that's when upsets happen. And this would qualify for an upset if Neighbor would come in here and break a four-game losing streak against Memphis, gain of one there, as we're about in a minute and a half here in the third quarter. You see in Memphis, I think settling in with the assignment of making the, the plays, of, of getting Navy's offense off schedule. What's killing them is the explosive plays right. after that. They're, they're making the regular plays. Usually you're used to seeing Navy with three and four yard plays. They're shutting those down, but it's the explosives they're giving up. So second and nine, ball at the 30. Lava tie to throw. Quick shot to the sideline. Brandon Chapman incomplete. 
He had the big play that set up the game tying touchdown. Couldn't get his feet in bounds there. Now third and nine. Yeah, he's got to know this is when you don't throw the ball a ton. You got to have your field awareness of where you are on the field. You always want to stop and sit two yards from the sideline if you're the flat control route that he was. And I know Navy's been successful throwing the ball tonight, but this is a position you typically want to put this offense in third long. Yeah, if you're Memphis. And this is not where they're coming from. You see Memphis now getting into their four down, their base look. This is what their bread and butter is for the Memphis D. And then Lavatai shoots it over the middle. He's going to be held short. Daba Fofana on the reception in a gain of seven. As we're now under a minute to play in the third quarter. Chandler Martin and Gant Narku there combined for the tackle. Navy will punt. And Coach Newberry, a lot of times you see Navy go for some of these. I'll tell you, he likes the way this defense is playing tonight. He's going to play the field position battle and, and trust his defense to try to get another stop. You're exactly right about that. He knows that his defensive unit has played hard tonight, slowing down a Memphis offense that scored 45 points a game in their first two. Kobe Drake deep to receive the Reapman punt. Fair catches it at the 22 after a punt to 41 with 20 seconds left here in the third. We had seen the college football rankings there a moment ago, and. This, I, I find every year we talk about, oh, it's going to be the same four teams. And maybe above any year we've seen in the playoff era, I think that this thing's wide open from top to bottom. I know people like Georgia's schedule. It's favorable to them. Alabama's already gone down. LSU's already gone down. Clemson's already gone down. I think Florida State right now, you could argue, has done the most this season. I think they are really, really good. They are, and they, they have, a, a, with Jordan Travis, they have a very mature quarterback. They look like a team that's playing with confidence. It's not going to head. They're playing with a chip on the shoulder, and they keep having that chip on their shoulder, how they play week in and week out. Of course, Mike Norvell, head coach of Florida State, took this Memphis program on to great things, and Blake Watson doing great things with his feet. What a run by Watson. Big play, Memphis. And a flag is on the play, thrown it around the 30. And what a great individual effort by Watson. We'll see what the flag is. And we've talked about the Navy backs breaking tackles all night long. But here it is, Blake Watson making you miss, running people over, keeping his feet going making the explosive play. He, the transfer from ODU, he, let's listen to the Transfer from ODU, back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons while he was there. There's a long discussion. Silverfield out there, talk with referee Ken Randall. Kevin Randall, excuse me. Personal foul, blocking below the waist, defense. Oh. Number 34. Penalties half the distance to the goal. This has Matt down. Austin written all over it. Matt, walk us through that. Yeah, that's a great call. It's actually, I believe, on number 44 for Navy. But as they're going downfield, he went low against an opponent. I think it's coming up right here. He goes low on number one right there, and you can't do that. That's a great call by the officials. Rare is the day you hear a legal block on defense, but it sets up a big play to end the third quarter. Before that 69-yard run, Memphis had 48 yards rushing on the night. And now they go into the fourth quarter with a little bit of momentum. And Blake Watson was our player to watch to start the game. He has come up big. We were throwing helmets. It was physical in the third quarter. We've got a good one in Memphis, tied at 21 apiece, headed to the fourth quarter after this. A good three quarters of football to start our Thursday night football journey. Dan Mullen, Matt Berry, Harry Lyles back with you. We're tied at 21 apiece here at Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium to start the fourth quarter. Memphis with the ball spotted at the four yard line. After the big run by Blake Watson to end the quarter, heading it out of the shotgun. Gives it up the middle. Ducker for one. 
That's the biscuit in there, Donald. But uh, what Don, Donald Berniard Jr. They call him the biscuit. That's why they call him biscuit because they Bernie just call him biscuit in there. He's the leader of the D line as, a, as the smallest guy. The nose tackle only weighing 256. Said he owns the room, but he owns the room, and when he speaks, everyone listens. We don't know why they didn't know why he was called biscuit. No, they did. They did update us on that. When he was born, he was little and round, and looked like a biscuit. His head again just trots in, puts the biscuit in the basket, and a touchdown for Hedigan. Memphis regains the lead. Second rushing touchdown of the night for Hennigan. That was a good ball play. Fake to the run up the middle. A little option play. Coming right out. You watch the zone read right here. Quarterback option. Reading number three. McDonald, 31. He takes the dive on the back. No one has Hennigan. He walks into the end zone. So Seth Morgan on for the extra points. No drama there. In the first, second play, rather, of the fourth quarter gives Memphis the lead. If you're wondering now, you're just tuning over, see the game's tied at 21 apiece, and Memphis punches it in there. Here's how they got to the four-yard line. Blake Watson is at a remarkable night. He leads Memphis in both rushing and receiving. This was all one-man effort. It was, just the line got him to, through the first level, but he was making people miss, breaking tackles, running down the field, physical play. He's been the leader of this offense, carrying them, catching it, running it, doing it all for Memphis. Let's go down to Harry. You know, Dan, you had mentioned that Watson had transferred from Old Dominion. He told me that was in part because he saw the running backs that have come out of this program, like Tony Pollard, D'Angelo Williams, Antonio Gibson, and more. He told me he wanted to be the next one. He's tried to mold his game after Christian McCaffrey the way he does everything. And he also told me he feels the grind city mentality of Memphis makes him run harder. And, and Harry, thank you, because when you list those three running backs, those NFL running yeah. backs that, that Harry just mentioned, Memphis turns out talent. I mean, just, they look the part. They do, they do, and he and, and he's that type of player. You watch him, not only how he runs the ball, but his skill of catching the ball coming out of the backfield is going to translate really well at the next level for him. This, this Memphis is, we were talking about maybe some comps of what this Memphis program is, situated with recruiting bed, and then the talent you can get. I, I had said it reminded me a little bit of UCF, of what Very they built there in Orlando, where it's a good school with the proximity to talent, and you can play and compete at football at a high level. Now, UCF left the conference going to the Big 12, but that's an example of what I think this place could be. And, and they've, they've done a great job, and you look and you get around campus, Laird Beach, their athletic director, has done a great job with the facilities and building facilities. We went over to their athletic area. I mean, golf facilities, unbelievable basketball, which you expect, but the standalone football facility, indoor facility, it's, and they're gonna redo the stadium here in the near future as well. Lava tied a throw on first down, keeps his eyes downfield, incomplete, intended for Eli Heidenreich. Greg Rubin there, the safety on the coverage. He also hung out with President Bill Hargrave, Dr. Bill Hargrave. He's also doing a great job here, year and a half, the president of Memphis. They've got things going well. He's got a pretty good golf swing, too. He can play. He, he can hit that ball off the tee. Sure can. Pre-game show, Maddie and Mullen Cup, of which Maddie's up one nothing. Lava tie keeps it, wiggles his way through the defense, gain of five. Down to Harry. Matt, you talk about golf, and Ty Lavatai told me his handicap is at nine right now. He said he thinks he can get a little bit better than that, though. Give him time during the offseason. All right. Huh? It's, we'll, we'll, we'll invite Ty out to a... We'll let him give us a stroke he, or a couple he, he's strokes. He's a single digit. We'll let him give us a couple strokes. But first things first, he's got this daunting third and five putt in the fourth quarter. Down seven. Up the middle. Nothing doing. Memphis there. And a gain of two, Hank Pearson. He's had a nice night, called his name a couple of times. It brings up. A fourth and two, and on comes the punting unit for the Mids. Memphis really settling down on, on their assignment with the option game, looking much more comfortable as the game wears on. 
of how they're fitting all the different option plays it may be. And it, it, they have talked about it. Their depth up front defensively. They love the depth they have defensively. And I think as the game goes on, you're starting to see that manifest itself a little bit. It's Kobe Drake again deep to receive. What Reithman got into that one. What a punt. Put some that, spin on it right there. I mean, that's like perfection. A pitching wedge right there. That was me with my Titleist gap wedge <laughs> and Pro V1. 62 yards. Check it. Put it. Make it. I mean, a 62 yard punt. If you're a coach, you got to love the execution there from special teams, pinning them back now to the five yard line when it looked it was going to be advantageous to them. Yeah, and, and, and a big, and this is a huge series for this Navy defense. They've got Memphis pinned back. They need to stop the momentum and get the ball back for their offense. They've played physical, they've come after them and been aggressive all night long. They need to continue to do that in this series. And conversely, it could be a backbreaker if Memphis is able to take this thing 95 yards down the field. They're going to start on first down, hand the ball right up. Up the middle and that's going to be Jay Ducker who's been involved tonight in a game of three brought down by our guy Rayon Lane the third and Clay Cromwell I say our guy Rayon Lane sat down with him this week just a fun kid to talk to big smile on his face grew up playing basketball said but I always wanted to get to play football and he's doing it here at the highest level at the Naval Academy great guy and they say best player on their team and, and outspoken, but he is a physical hitter and can make every play all over the field. So now second and seven. Again, the run up the middle, and again, Navy's defense there. We're going to bring up about a third and six. Crowd a little antsy about those two play calls as Busick brings him down. A little conservative right here back to the wall. We saw them practicing the other day. They were aggressive in these sets and they're practicing on this part of the field, throwing the football. Perhaps a bit surprising, no Blake Watson or Sutton Smith down here. And here's this no deep look again. They got the, they're showing everybody coming and man to man with the four DBs across the board. Let's see if they come or they bail out right here. Here comes the pressure. Hennigan's got to be careful. Hennigan tries to step up, and he's brought down again. Landon Robinson and Will Harbor. And what a story Landon Robinson is. They think he is just scratching the surface of his potential at the Naval Academy. He initially couldn't get into the Naval Academy because he had a peanut allergy. Yeah. <laughs> it, I didn't know that was a thing. Couldn't get in because of a peanut allergy. They went, he tested all of this, and end of the story here you know he's playing at the Naval Academy he was able to get in but great pressure again by the Navy defense and, and, and he plays on the kickoff team he covers kickoffs as well as a nose tackle right there um, but Jake Ducker in that series which is interesting with the two star backs you have so Navy three straight three and out since that game tying touchdown down to Harry Guys, to talk about Landon Robinson, he's genuinely one of the best athletes on the field right now. He ran the 100 meter in high school, also played baseball, but he might be the strongest guy out here on the football field. He told me right now he's squatting almost 700 pounds and he could punch out nearly 30 reps of 225 right now and has a 33 inch vertical. You know, just light work. Look at this guy. <laughs> Look at that squat rack. What a story. Yeah. All right, so everybody new, loves leg day. Everybody loves leg day. New quarterback in for Navy, Blake Horvath. Again, three straight, three and outs. And they get their best field position to get it started. Horvath, they thinks the better thrower. Let's see what kind of option he gives them. And right out of the gate, Chandler Martin. He tried to boot that naked, and that was 11 versus 11, and Memphis is one. He read that right off the, the right away. See, they fake the counter sweep, and they're coming back with it. You see him just reading it right away, shoot the gap. Great tackle for loss, puts Navy behind the chains right away. So now second and 11. Off the outside, Brandon Chatham, no game. And there's Chandler Martin again. Tracking the play down, you see the speed and the athleticism that he has to go make that play 
and chase the sweep down. He comes in on from the East outside. Tennessee State, led the team in tackles, tackles for losses, three and a half sacks. He's playing a good game. Absolutely. Running with the, the receiver in motion across, tracks him the whole way, closes, makes the tackle, two straight tackles for loss, puts Navy in a third and long situation. Again, Horvath, his first series of the night. Play clock at seven, third and 11. Down to three, snap off. Horvath steps up, finds room, gets the first down and more. Fumbles the ball. Navy's there. How much more chaos can you have in one play? Can't Narku forced the fumble. Horvath gets the first down and then fumbles it, and they're right there to recover. And they love the athleticism by Horvath. Great pickup by the back there in the backfield. And you could see it coming. You want to put the ball away, and you see the punch out. Excellent defense right there, but great effort by the O-line running down the field to fall on the ball and recover that fumble. Trey Cummings chasing the play wow. down the field with great effort and is there. Ball bounces to guys that give good effort. Kent Narku looked like he was there for a strip technique. It was perfect, wide open. What a great job by Memphis closing. That was Simeon Blair. And Horvath had Anton Hall Jr. and Blair closed that and knocked it incomplete. Really interesting play. Like you get the, when you we say you get down here into the red zone, some of the trick play comes. They faked the counter, faked an option. He had him for a second. That is good foot. That is great recovery by Simeon Blair. Came the in. Second or came in and became the captain from after, Arkansas. Uh, from Arkansas. He was the captain of Arkansas, came in here, and they said the team just bought into him right away from day one. 22 starts at Arkansas, hit the portal, came here, won over his team in a big play to save the touchdown. Second and 10, Horvath just can't get it going with the option. And that's Cantu Arku. The leaders are starting to step up now for the Tigers in a loss of three. And I think, you know, coming into the short week for this Memphis defense, they're playing the option, all the different looks. They're seeing a lot of unbalanced. and showing some things maybe they hadn't seen. They're getting comfortable with all of the reads and their fits in this option game. These linebackers are flying around, fitting and making the tackles. Down to Harry. Guys, you see this energy coming from Canton Arku. His mother is here in the building watching him play for the last time in person. She's from Quebec City, Canada because of her work schedule. This is going to be the last time she gets to see her son play, and he is bringing the energy tonight. He sure is here. Number nine stepping up for mom in a timeout Navy. What an absolute sequence of plays. This Memphis defense has prided themselves all year, and they are making plays when they need it. Third and 13, protecting the seven-point lead. It is the transfer portal era in college football, and some of the key additions for Memphis stepping up on this drive. You know, the running, running back, Blake Watts, we've seen him tonight, ODU, but defensively, Simeon Blair, Arkansas, Cantu Arku, Syracuse, Josh Ellison, Oklahoma. They've hit the portal and done it right. Yeah, they have, and brought in a lot of big names. Now, they've lost a lot of guys to the portal as well, some star players from last year, but they came in and got some impact players out of the transfer portal this year. Third and 12. 7.51 left in the game. Navy out of the timeout. Fofana in motion. The give to Fofana off the right side. Memphis defense there makes the stop. Fourth down. Jalen Allen. And a loss of one, what a possession for the Tigers' defense. It was huge stop here at the end. And I think in the call, when you're looking at what they're trying to do right there, and people wonder, what was, was, was what this Coach Newberry, what are they trying to get done? I think they were thinking possible two plays. We got to see Edward Warren has not looked great kicking the ball. They wanted to see if they could gain part of it there, potentially go for it on fourth down. When they got nothing, they're going to try the field goal. And actually, new kicker, Nathan Kirkwood in to kick right here. Kirkwood to kick, 35 yards. Nothing to it, up and good. There you go. So a nice kick there, 35 yards, keeps Navy in it, 28-24, midway through the fourth quarter. That's a fun ball game here tonight. Navy held 
into a field goal. Kirkwood's first field goal attempt, but the defense has done a stout job this half. Well, and what's happened is they had a short week to prepare for this game. And when you're playing against Navy, you have got to have great eye discipline, great fundamentals, and, and know your keys. And I think as the games wore on, they've gotten comfortable with playing the option offense, adjusting to the speed of how it is. It's sometimes hard to recreate on your scout team. And you see them more comfortable defensively making the reads, making their fits, and tackling the ball. And I tell you, I love Newberry in a day of analytics and say, well, should we go for it? Kicked the field goal to stay in the game and didn't jeopardize an opportunity to get points. And now Memphis will get the ball first to the 25. Our featured football games on ESPN Plus this Saturday. Oklahoma State hosts South Alabama. Texas Tech hosts Tarleton State and Samford travels to Auburn to take on the Tigers. Coverage of all three games begins at 7 Eastern. ESPN Plus, ESPN Plus.com. Download the ESPN app. Now, this is not a time for Memphis to get conservative right here. I think they need to stay with their, their foot on the gas right now, stay aggressive, and try to go down and put another score in the game and really put the pressure on this Navy offense to have to play from behind. So play fake for Hennigan on first down. He's going to keep it himself, wisely get down. Now, throughout the year, with Dan Mullen up here in the booth, I've learned over the past week or so going to these meetings and talking to you, you've got a connection to everyone at every program. So we're going to do six degrees of Dan Mullen and the connections you have with some of these coaches after the play here. Second and five after a gain of five. Up the middle. Blake Watson is a one-man machine. There goes Watson. Can he punch it in? Watson extends. Out of bounds at the one. Rayon Lane did not give up on it. And Watson was one yard short of a 70-yard touchdown run. And he's put this team on his shoulders all. Let's see if he gets to the pile. Oh! Hey, now, hey, now. That's going to be close. They might take a look at this hey, now. one. There we go. Ruling on the field is with the runner is shown to go on. The previous play is under further video review. Ooh. Ooh, I, I legitimately have this as a coin toss. Matt Austin, you've been hanging out with us all night. I would lean towards touchdown here. Well, I think you're going to see that his right foot touches down right about the one yard line. Next step, right about there. There was a view from up above where you could see the foot touching the white. I think it's going to be down just short of the goal line. Here's the view right here. Next foot, next foot, right there. Foot's in the white, ball short. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I. You almost I'm gonna go with a stand. You're gonna go with the stands. All right. You almost with that with that right foot, the way it touches, it's almost like it's with the white cleat, you can't tell. Either way, an effort tonight out of Blake Watson. 170 yards on eight carries and a touchdown. He's got 68 yards receiving. He's a one-man show right now for this offense. They're, they're, part of it is they want to make sure the ball gets in his hands. They're doing it in the run game, they're doing it in the pass Look game. Look at how close he's responding. I think it's like his right pinky, pinky toe. toe. <laughs> <laughs> by a pinky toe. Look at that. Great job by our, our control room there, getting us a good look at that. 69 yards, that's two big runs of 69 plus for Watson. So while we're doing the review in the, in the six degrees of Dan Mullen, we're gonna call that a few degrees short of a touchdown. We'll wait for the official word. You've got a connection with every single program we've been to. What's your connection to the staff tonight? All right, so the, the first with Coach Newberry right now, he got his first win as a head coach last week against Wagner College. Okay. Wagner College happens as a, I, I'm an alum. I was That was my first coaching job, was a grad assistant wide receiver coach for Walt Hamline at Wagner College in Staten Island, New York. Then we go over to Coach, uh, the, on the other side of the ball, we go over to Coach Silverfield. Yeah. His first 
college coaching job was the quarterbacks coach at Jacksonville University. Okay. He was the quarterback coach, the head coach there at the time, Steve Gilbert. Okay. Who also had to put up with me as the head coach at her sinus college. After review, the ruling on the field stands. It'll be first and goal at the one-yard line. All right, first to go at the one-yard line. Mullins, one for one. <laughs> so those jobs are so small. What did they pay? So Wagner College, I, 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 they gave you a, you had a dorm room that you could sleep in. You got a meal card for the cafeteria, and you made that whopping $3,000 a year salary. Oh, my God. That goes a long way in Staten Island, New York. My God. You were telling me a story about how you used to conserve Gatorade with just a little bit of Gatorade from a big bottle. Yeah, you, I could afford one a week, so I'd have to, like, water it down with that New York City tap water. That sounds lovely. You know what? Oh, balls out. Balls out in the end zone. Watson got it. Did Navy Rick, what a turn of events if Navy recovered that. They say they did. They did. And Touch Navy back. gets the ball. Unbelievable. Wow. And that, that. Memphis on the doorstep of putting this away, and Justin Reed recovers the Watson fumble. Just never got the handoff. They missed the handoff completely. Ball's bouncing around there in the end zone. What a break for Navy. And we talked about it, the get six that Coach Newberry wants to get right now with the three and outs, the fourth down stop, and the turnover. So here's the difference between a touchdown and the turnover. The call stands. Wow. It's a game of inches. It, it really is, is a game that is of unbelievable inches. unbelievable what just happened. So now Blake Horvath back at quarterback with under six minutes left, can bring Navy back down 28-24. It's been a struggle. Three and outs, three of them, and a turnover. Horvath forced out of the pocket. Going to keep it. He's going to take it to the sideline, chased out after a gain of six by Simeon Blair. And you see why the staff's excited about Horvath and his future right there. I know they, they said a better passer, but you look at the burst and athleticism he, he has. Coming around that edge, he is, he is an athlete with the ball in his hands. Said he has a different level. I feel he's the best quarterback of the lot. Played his first college snaps just a couple weeks ago. And now he's the guy down four. There's that burst to get to the outside. Brought down by Blair. Gain of nine, first down Navy. And this is right in Navy's wheelhouse right now. They're down four, five minutes left in the game. The opportunity to take their time, try to put a drive together. They're going to try to make, make this the final possession of the game and try to punch this in with as little time as possible if they can. That's Navy football. What a growth moment for this young quarterback if he could pull it off. Navy four consecutive losses to Memphis. First and ten, up the middle. Nothing doing. Gain of three. That was Tesca, who's had a nice night. Got the scoring started. He's 14 carries, 145 yards. And those runs in the first half were going for eight and 10 yards at times and some missed tackles. You haven't seen that. The Memphis defense in the second half has really been a lot more solid up the middle. 13 carries, 142, second and seven. Horvath, boy, he's confident with the ball. It's out again. Memphis is there. Simeon Memphis Blair ball. forced it. Memphis recovered it. Wow. Jalen Allen on the recovery. And maybe that's a young quarterback being careless with the ball and the Memphis defense took advantage. Well, he's going to have to learn to protect the ball in this offense. Puts it away, but great job right there. Puts the shoulder right on the football. But if you're going to play quarterback for Navy, you're going to have to make sure that you protect this ball because you're going to be running it an awful lot right there. You can't be loose with that football. Great form tackle right there. Memphis takes over and has a chance to put this game away.
All right, I'm Scott Van Pelken. Set for Sports Center. We'll have highlights of the Vikings and Eagles. Damian Woody in house to break things down. Latest from the wild card races and get ready for winners. That and more right after the game, which is going on. Matt Barry, back to you. I'll shut up. Scotty, look, what a what a football season for Van Pelt. Yeah. Mondays, Monday Thursdays, night football. And then he gets to follow us up. 22 million viewers on Monday night. We'll probably be just a little less than that. Just on Just a touch. But you know what? We still get the same post-game cover to Scott Van Pelt. That's what it is. Who, by the way, has a quote in the Memphis in the Memphis facility. in the Memphis locker room. Yeah, the Scott Van Pelt yeah. quote up on the sign in the facility. The second and 10, 3.30 and counting. Memphis with the ball, two timeouts. Watson, who fumbled it, fumbled it again. The ball popped out again. That's Clay Cromwell on the tackle right there from right down the street in Oxford, Mississippi. A little bit of a homecoming from him coming back here close to home to play. That ball looked like it scored it out, and, and, and Memphis obviously fell on it. And, and this is, you know, you've watched men's Memphis offense with the run game, Blake Watson with popping explosive runs all day. But this is where they need to improve to become a contender and compete for a championship is the ability to run the ball consistently, not rely on the explosive play, be able to put a game away running the football. So now third and 11. First down means it's timeout time. Hennigan over the middle, he gets picked off. Seth Hennigan just threw an interception. And it's Rayon Lane on third and 11, cut in front of the receiver. And Navy has life to win. I wonder who they'll bring in at quarterback. This is amazing. Uh, what a play by Rayon Lane. Breaking on the ball. They've been heating about ball day. We said he's in man pressure. He's like, you can put me out there on an island. I'm great. Sees the throw. Breaks on the ball, great job. He is the guy that this defense depends on. He's, they say he's his best player. I'll tell you what, if you've got to go in a foxhole, I'm jumping in with Ray on lane. What or if shooting out of a sub or on the on the, on when they're go. out there on yeah. ships in the middle. Of the, I yeah. want him. I want him. We want him on that wall and we need him on that yeah, wall. We're more water based here with Navy. More water based. <laughs> and Horvath is going to get the ball again. 218, two timeouts. Ball at the 49 yard line. Horvath keeps it. Three yards, tackled by Sincere Evans. What a performance tonight at a Navy. Well, and this is going to be interesting, and they're bringing Ty Labatai back in. And last week, right before half at, at, in the Wagner game, they executed a perfect two-minute drill, spread the field, threw the ball down the field for a touchdown right before half. So they've been in this situation where they've been able to drive the ball late in the half. It's a little different animal playing this Memphis defense, though. Labatai, 8 of 15, 122 yards and a touchdown. He's had the better night, forced out of the pocket, didn't take a shot deep, flag on the play, and a dropped interception and another flag on the play. We've got two penalties. Ruben was on the coverage. Flag in the backfield, flag upfield. Looks like these might offset. We might have a hold and a pass interference here. Kevin Randall and his crew have a There are two talk. fouls on the play, one by each team, holding offense number 59. Pass interference, defense number 35. Those fouls offset, replay second down. That was DJ Bell. Had a pick six a week ago, but tonight's been a different story for him. He's struggling. Let's look at the first penalty in the backfield. Yeah, and they were trying to run a hitch and go on the outside that and you just see that. He ropes and breaks him down right here. This was a little bit close. I, the pass interference occurred before we just saw right. that right there. Uh, bumping him when he was trying to get back to the inside. But we'll do it all over again on second down. Yep. Play didn't count. Two penalties. Makes it none. Second and seven. The run outside. And a first down Navy. That Tesco. Stop the clock under two minutes with the, 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 the old rules that everybody knows go into effect under two minutes and a half. 
Our Thursday night college football opener for this crew coming down to the end. Lavatai quick throw, overthrow. Second down. Well, you see this, the nice thing, if you're Navy, or if you're Memphis, excuse me, last week they got to see what this two-minute was. And, and we understand Navy, Navy's expanded with their pass offense, but the, they're not certainly this complex pass offense. Sure. They don't have a lot, and Memphis has seen them try to run the two-minute drill and has a good feel for what they're going to try to run. And this gets into to Memphis's base defense of where they've been so good being able to disguise coverages down the field. Lava tie with time over the middle. Looks like early contact will be a foul on Martin. It'll be a penalty on Chandler Martin intended for Tesco. Pass interference, defense, number 11. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. And Martin is injured. Just wrapped him up a little bit too early right there. But hey, if, if you know, with the big plays Tesca's made right now, that's a short little penalty. So as you can see, Tesca, they're trying to clear it out, run a little option route by Tesca. As he's going right there, and you see Martin thought he was beat, pull him down. It's a three to four yard penalty. You certainly don't want Tesca with the ball in his hands in the open field. We've seen how that went earlier today. So the net of the penalty would be a first down. Spot of the foul. So a minute 17 left. They're going to have to try to push the ball down the field a little bit further here at some point soon, though. Each team with two timeouts. Navy 284 yards on the ground, but they're going to throw. Lavatai tries to escape the pressure, does so but only able to pick up two. Derek Hunter tripped him up. They're running a play, no timeout used. Clock in a minute. Second and eight, designed run, lava time. They're gonna have to burn one here. They have to. Two ESPN primetime matchups. With Navy's timeout, Saturday a good one. Tennessee travels to the swamp to take on Florida 7 Eastern. What was your uh, record against Tennessee? I uh, undefeated against Tennessee, both as an assistant and a head coach. Okay. Then Coach Prime and number 18 Colorado Buffalo square off against Colorado State. The Rocky Mountain Showdown. Jane Orvell. Can I can I get something off my chest? <laughs> can I please get something yeah. off my chest? We as a media can't have it both ways. We can't complain when a coach gives us coach speak yes. and then does what Jay Norvell does, which is give us something really good, and then complain <laughs> and make him into a villain for doing it. It's one of the other media. You either get the coach speak or the entertainment. You can't complain about both. Yeah. Well, you know, he was I trying to match. Great. He was trying to match. You know we what? We need that. Give us a villain. Now he's probably going to pay for it on Saturday, but at least he said it. And that's a, that's, that is a rivalry game. So third and five, 52 seconds left. Run outside, Tesco's got space. Tesco's gonna get the first down. Amin Hassan with the key block to spring him for 12. Tesco, what a night, 163 yards on 15 carries. And the perimeter blocking of these Navy, the, the wingback receivers, that you know, they're kind of the, all their hybrid players out there are doing a great job. Stop blocking on the edge, creating some of these explosive plays. And Tesca's an athlete. Uh, he has some speed getting around that edge. 45 seconds left, one timeout for Navy. Ball at the 19. Lava tie to throw. Miss Reed incomplete. Miscommunication between the two intended for Kent. Second down. And this is where you see some of the simplicity in the pass game comes. I, you'd love to see them right now. They, they, it looks like Memphis has figured out their two by two pass game. They, they don't have a lot of concepts. They have, they have the smash concept and the, uh, the, the, the clout concept where they clear in a quick out underneath. Memphis is kind of sitting on those. They need to come up with something a little different or change up the formation here. Over the middle, has a man. They're gonna have to probably use their last timeout right here. 
38 and counting, gain of six. They're gonna try to get a playoff. Clock to 30. They mixed it up right there. A little of the spot corner flat right there that they ran in that concept. Clock to 20. It's gonna be under 20. Lava is gonna be under pressure. Now they're gonna have to use a timeout. 15 seconds. Quick timeout. Josh Ellis in there in the sack and a loss of two. It's gonna come down to one play. Fourth and six. Navy uses their final timeout. So it all we got here because of some bizarre plays down the stretch. Watson, 69 yards, ruled out before the touchdown. Next play, fumbled it. So then Navy comes back with Blake Horvath. They fumble the ball. Memphis recovers. We're not done yet because Seth Hennigan picked off. Rayon Lane with the interception, and now because of it, We've got fourth and six, 14 seconds left. No timeouts for Navy. This is the ball game, Coach, because even if they get the first down, clock's going to stop. You might be able to clock at one. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna have to get right back on the ball and go. But this is Thursday night football. This is what it's all about right here. Great games coming right down to the wire. Two great teams. First conference game for both. Trying to get a win. Navy trying to beat the four-game losing streak to Memphis comes down to this play. Complete. Oh, that's oh going to be goodness. close. It is going to be a game of inches. Clock is stopped. And they're, they're going to stop. They're going to have to measure this. This is going to come down to a blade of turf. Jade Numbarger on the reception. So Navy right now has to get a... They have to get a play call. They have to be up on the ball as soon as this ball is spotted, ready to go. They might have a chance to get two plays on. They got it. First down, Navy. They got to be on the ball, ready to go. They're going to... They should just clock it right here. This is actually an opportunity, unfortunately. They, well, they don't they have they're to wait. go clock it. They, they got to wait for the chains to get off the field. Well, they should let them get off the field. They're lined up for a play <laughs> with the chains right in the middle of them. They need to, but they should be able to get set right now. Call a play you want. Take a shot throwing the ball into the end zone. And you get two plays. I think if you spike the ball here, you're probably only going to get one play. So you want them to bang it, play. You want them to play. You're, you're up on the ball, ready to go. Previous play is under further video review. The ruling on the field was that the, the runner made the line of game. That play is under further video review. All right, Matt Austin, our rules analyst, what are you seeing here? Well, I think he is definitely short of the line to gain. So now it's going to come down to it was fourth down. He's short. Going to be a turnover to Memphis. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of the clock situation here. Right there, he, he barely gets to the 10. He's got to get a full yard behind. So I'm pretty sure they're going to mark this short, and the ball's going to turn over to Memphis. You hear the reaction from the crowd. They are seeing the television replay in the screen at the stadium. So they're seeing what we're seeing on the broadcast right now. Now, again, the yellow line isn't... That's when they brought the chain out. Yeah. The chain was a lot closer to the 10 than it was the 9, I think, when they measured it out there onto the field. It the yellow line looked like it was at the 9, but the chain looks like it's it's right... It's, it's much closer to the 10 than the 9. The yellow line was a little further down. I'm with you. The chain from where we sit in our vantage point up here in the booth is situated. I mean, the, 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 you look at the, the back chain is right around the 20, just inside the 20, and the other one's just Dot inside the, the 10. Head. Right. Oh, this is big. Let's lay out. Let's do the call. After review, the ruling on the field has been changed. The runner was short of the 11 yard line. He was down at the 10 yard line. It will be Memphis ball, first and 10 at the 10 yard line. And that's how this remarkable game will be decided. 
What an effort by the midshipmen and Coach Newberry. And Memphis is going to make it five in a row against Navy and 3-0 and oh to start the season. And this Memphis defense came in was all the talk of how great they've been. And they gave up some big plays, but when the game was on the line, they, made, they created the turnovers and made the stops they needed to make. So Dan Mullen, this is how we do it on Thursday Night Football. That's what it's all about, right? We, this is fun. We come out, we talk ball for three and a half hours, and sometimes we get weird. Tell you what, this is one of those games you can walk away from as a fan and just say both teams played their butts off tonight. It doesn't both, teams, the, both teams deserve to win. That's what there, I said. There were, and there were breaks on both sides, but you just saw, I mean, the, the, the responses from both teams at all, at, at all over the field. When the one team would score, the momentum swings back and forth. What a fantastic game for us for our first Thursday night game of the year. I can't wait to do a lot more of these. This was a lot of fun. I mean, it came down to an inch in the final play of the game for Navy to spring the upset. They couldn't do it. Memphis now 28-24. What a start to our season. Ben Ward produced it, Ed Curran directed it. For Harry Lyles, Dan Mullen, I'm Matt Berry. That'll do it from Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. Scott Van Pelt takes it from here.